You're watching college football on ESPN presented by PlayStation View from Norman, Oklahoma. The fourth ranked Sooners with everything in front of them. Playoff hopes, potential Heisman Trophy, and West Virginia. Baker Mayfield will not start. Although it didn't keep him from hyping up the crowd and keeping himself excited and focused, and he will be the storyline certainly early on here this afternoon. Got the word last week that Baker Mayfield will not start the game. No one seems to know when he will start except for Lincoln Riley. Steve Levy along with Brian Greasy. Todd McShay is at field level on a spectacular Saturday afternoon here in Oklahoma. Marcellius Sutton and Rodney Anderson are back to receive, and Evan Staley will kick it away for West Virginia. Mountaineers come off a 28-14 loss in Texas. A week ago, Oklahoma took care of Kansas to the tune of 41-3. And it's run out by Marcellius Sutton, and he's out to the 31-yard line. And it was in that game in Kansas when we had all the trouble. There's a Kansas failing to shake Mayfield's hand, yeah. and then the inappropriate gesture and so on. Did Oklahoma get this right? Did they do, the, do enough? I think Lincoln Riley got it right. You had to do something. Baker Mayfield knew something was coming, and I think Lincoln Riley suspending him you know, for the first series, maybe two series, don't know what it's going to be, but the captaincy, you know, what's one of the biggest honors you can have as a college football player is being a captain and at home in your last time in this stadium for Baker Mayfield. That's what hurt him the most and that he took the attention away from his teammates in the win last week. Those were the things, I think, a great way for Lincoln Riley to send a message to his quarterback. So as Mayfield watches, Kyler Murray is the starting quarterback today for the Sooners. And on first down, Murray's going to keep it, and he can run! He can run across midfield! He can run down the sideline! Kyler Murray to be knocked out of bounds at the four by Elijah Battle. How's that for the first snap and his first start? 66 yards. Boy, no Baker, no problem. Kyler Murray is a talented individual, one of the highly, most highly recruited athletes coming out of high school in college football. Went to Texas A&M, didn't work out for him there. He's made the decision to come here to Oklahoma, and his first snap in Baker Mayfield's shadow, he almost takes it to the house. I keep Mayfield on the bench a little longer. Here's first and goal now. On the ground, Rodney Anderson. And he's on his feet into the end zone for a touchdown. How do you like me now? 49 seconds in. Oklahoma scores the touchdown. A huge smile from Baker Mayfield as he Gives Kyler Murray a hug there, but Lincoln Riley, think about him. He had to make this decision. This is a Heisman front runner at home his last game, and he sat him down for disciplinary reasons, and Kyler Murray goes out there in two plays. They're in the end zone. Austin Sutter on for the extra point. What a story, Kyler Murray. A couple of years ago, he got three starts at AM, but what a start here today. The thing that he brings that Baker Mayfield doesn't quite have is the speed element. We were talking with Lincoln Riley yesterday. He says if he gets in the second level, nobody's going to catch him. Almost didn't catch him here, but that's the element in the run game, the zone read, the option game. That's what he brings, and uh, Baker Mayfield, you know what's going through him, his mind on the sideline, and how much this is hurting him, and that just takes kind of all that anxiety away. And Rodney Anderson finishes the drive. Because what you don't want to be the story after the game is the fact that, that Mayfield didn't start the game. You want this to be put away with the done, and I think that's what Lincoln was hoping for. And uh, wow, what a start. And then, you know, if it is for a series grease, you expected it to be more than two snaps. Yeah, I think that's what they might be talking about right there, right? You know, Lincoln might be saying, hey, man, I told you one series, but that was only two plays, man. We might have to go another series here. 
But the message has been sent. Yes. Right? But this this week, yes. Baker Mayfield having to deal with this week with the media, the captaincy issue, uh, he was humbled, right? He was down in the dumps on Sunday. And on Monday when he met with Lincoln Riley, Lincoln said, listen, man, I, I'm not asking you to change, but I want you to find a better you and have some class. Don't lose your edge. Learn to manage it. And I think that's hopefully what we'll see from Baker when he gets in this game. So if you're just joining us now, it's 7-0 Oklahoma. And it'll be a touchback to bring it out to the 25. We say hi to our guy, Todd McShay. Uh, just watching Baker before, I wanted to see if there's any difference, and there wasn't any. He was the same exact guy that he always is. The most energetic quarterback I've ever seen during a pregame, running from drill to drill. The first one always there, getting all of his players all fired up. And I talked to one coach, he said, listen, only the two quarterbacks and the head coach know exactly when he's going to play, but I'm guessing it's in the first three series. Talked to Baker as he's jogging off. I said, we good, man? He said, I'm great. Let's go. And I wouldn't expect any other answer. Baker Mayfield. So what a start to this one. First down and 10 for the 25. Chris Chuganov is the quarterback for the Mountaineers. We have backup quarterbacks on both sides and a big run for Justin Crawford. Eventually taken down by Will Johnson. Chris Chuganov is making his first career start. What a place to start in place of the injured Will Greer. Yeah, and, and Will Greer went out with that uh, fractured, dislocated finger last week against Texas. And Chris Chuganoff, talk about difficult situations. Coming for Will Greer, who's been outstanding this season, but on the road in a hostile environment against an Oklahoma team ranked fourth in the country. Gain of 16 on first down out of the Wildcat. Here's Kennedy McCoy carrying the football as they line up Chuganoff out towards the sideline. This Chuganoff, he, he's a tough character. He took some shots last week. Texas is an outstanding defense, and they came after him. Todd Orlando took some shots on him, and he got up after hits like this. That's a targeting call of Brecken Hager thrown out of the game, but he stood in there, fired some shots down the field. The thing that he has, Steve, he's got some receivers, three of them, outstanding wide receivers, all three, Jennings, Seals, and White, over 900 yards. That's why Will Greer, who you saw there, has had such an outstanding year. Chug it up. They'll hand it off to Justin Crawford. He's got the first down and then some. And they are well into Sooners territory now. Gain a 10 on that play for Justin Crawford, who came in 37 yards shy of 1,000 rushing for the season. Well, Jake Spavino, the offensive coordinator for West Virginia, and Dana Holderson, they met this week, and they tried to come up with a game plan that would make Chris Chuganoff feel comfortable. And there's Spav. He knows that you got to run the football. Justin Crawford has got to be featured at least 20 to 25 times in this game for them to have any chance on the road. Again, a wildcat to Kennedy McCoy, and he will carry the football down to the 35. Emmanuel Beal made the stop for Oklahoma. So in a handful of snaps, his first starting quarterback, they've got chugging on every other down, lining up as a wide receiver. The other thing they're going to do, Steve, they're going to slow this tempo down. You see, West Virginia normally goes hyper fast, right? Dana Holgerson, as many snaps as we can get. But you see them right now kind of in a muddle huddle. They gave up a big touchdown drive to start. They want to try to milk this clock a little bit on the road, take possessions away from Oklahoma. Chug it up will take this snap and hand it off to Kennedy McCoy. And they'll bring up a third down and short. Beal makes the stop. Chug it off for those of you scoring at home. When he came in as a backup, replacing the injured Will Greer a week ago, he was number 11. Gets the start, switched his uniform number. He's wearing number five today. That was his number in high school. So all your fans in West Virginia want to go out and buy a Chug it off jersey. Make sure you get the number five. There he is. They split him out again now. Again, it's Kennedy McCoy. They continue to run out of this Wildcat, and why not? McCoy's got the first down, and they are in field goal range. Trey Norwood makes the stop. If you want to follow this West Virginia offense and where they have success, follow number 28, Wellman, right here. Most of the time when they run the football, it's going to go to number 28. The fifth-year senior out of Huntington, excellent blocker, catches the ball well out of the backfield as well. I've never gone. seen this from West Virginia Steve, an actual huddle. You were expecting that. <laughs> Eli Wellman goes by the nickname of Big Stink. 
I didn't bother to ask why. <laughs> Here's Marcus Sims trying to get the ball into the wide receiver's hands. And bring up a third down. Kenneth Murray and Caleb Kelly. Prior to that play, West Virginia had 50 yards in six plays, all on runs. Well, this Oklahoma defense, they've taken the first shot from West Virginia. They've given up some yards on this drive. They've had some wildcat. They have some misdirection. You got to always take that first blow from, a, from an offense. But Oklahoma defensively last week, that's the reason they won the football game against Kansas. Only gave up three points. Back to back weeks, they played strong. They held TCU to 20 points. This Oklahoma defense is getting stronger as the year goes on. Second and 11. Those three wide receivers bottom of your screen. And they wanted to keep it on the ground at Crawford, but there is a timeout. West Virginia calls their first timeout of the half. It'll be a media break. We'll take the timeout with them. We have yet to see Baker Mayfield in the game. Will it be the second series? Oklahoma 7-0 lead, West Virginia on the move. At Coors, we logger filter and package coal. Darn. Baker Mayfield might not be a captain today for Oklahoma, might not have participated in the coin toss out of the 50-yard line, but his jersey did. Orlando Brown out there with Dimitri Flowers. That gives you some idea of how beloved Baker is by his teammates. Here's chugging on his first pass attempt of the game. Back of the end zone and out of the end zone. Gary Jennings was there. Jennings has not been able to find the end zone all season except for one time. And while that was a completion out of the end zone, he's clear. Yeah, great coverage there by Stephen Parker. Great job by Parnell Motley and Parker talking, switching off that route on the outside. Hard play action on second down, and Oklahoma defensively was not fooled. Sooner's secondary has been a bit of an issue. Got a couple of true freshmen out there. We'll watch for that all afternoon. Third down and 11. Trey Brown and Trey Norwood, both of them true freshmen. We'll see a bunch of them. On third and 11, they keep it on the ground. And Justin Crawford, he's still on his feet. He has the first down. Great second effort by Justin Crawford. Moves to six. Great block here by Lingenfelter. Take a look at this offensive line. Getting up to the second level on the Mike linebacker, Ken Murray. He just kind of plants him in the ground. And... <laughs> Crawford is just pushing that defensive line. That was Neville Gallimore who had his back to him and he was just pushing him downfield. Ligafelter on the block there. He's in for the Kyle Bosch injury. The starting right guard out with a lower leg. First down and 10 now. About the 15. A little shovel to Wellman. Bring him second down. If West Virginia is going to pull off this upset on the road. It's a tall task, but it has to start with their offensive line up front because they need to control the game, control the amount of possessions Oklahoma's great offense has, and then run the football with Crawford, Kennedy McCoy, and Petaway. And Ada Holgerson knows that he's got a, a, a quarterback that hasn't made his first start. This offensive line has to take the game on their back. This is a beautiful looking drive to this point. Here's Chuganoff. Trying to set up the screen, able to get it to Wellman. And he's stopped by Amani Bledsoe. Back to the line of scrimmage, third down. Great recognition by Bledsoe. We see this so much in college football these days. This roll to one side and then throwback screen, whether it's to a tight end. In this case, it's to a fullback and Elijah Wellman. But uh, Monty Bledsoe, smart football player, just a true sophomore, diagnosed it and came up with the pack. Stamps keeps raving about Bledsoe. He's coming on. 12th play of the drive upcoming. They've been able to convert on two third downs so far. There's third and eight with Jennings in motion. And they keep it on the ground at Crawford. And he won't get there. He will get down to the 10. Kenneth Murray made the stop. Giving the ball to Crawford is a good idea all the time. He had 331 yards rushing against this Oklahoma defense a year ago. Yeah, they got down big early in that game, and a lot of those yards were in garbage time, so it's going to be much tougher sledding, I think, in this game. Fourth and six upcoming, so we'll get the field goal attempt. It's Evan Staley 
who is just three for four on the season. It's a 28-yard field goal attempt. And so the Mountaineers able to counter that 49-yard touchdown drive by Oklahoma with a seven-minute drive of their own. That winds up in a field goal. Is it Baker, Maker, Baker Mayfield time? We'll find out. All indications, we expect to see Baker Mayfield back in the game for the first time today. And he'll get quite the reception from this crowd. No matter what he does, they love Baker Mayfield, one of the most beloved players in Oklahoma history. I think he'll go down. What's not to love, right? Sutton will take a knee. the Baker Mayfield show. And I'm Kyler Murray. I'm saying, hey, what about me, coach? <laughs> I thought I did pretty well in there. Did you want a faster scoring drive in 49 seconds? And on first down, handoff. Rodney Anderson right up the middle. Making some cuts. Anderson is knocked down just shy of the 15 by Mike Daniels. Very similar to the opening drive for the Sooners. Take a look at this move that Rodney Anderson puts on the secondary. That right there, not known for his quick feet, more of a big downhill running back, but he was passed up earlier in the year. Trey Sermon, Abdul Adams both took reps away from Rodney Anderson and got a little help from his quarterback. Think he's not excited to be back on the field? 58-yard run by Rodney Anderson. Kyler Murray, the quarterback who started, ran for 66 on the first offensive snap. And on the first throw of the game by Baker Mayfield, he completes to CeeDee Lamb. offense so explosive I and mean, we run the ball between the tackles back to back drives one time with Kyler Murray now with Rodney Anderson then you flip the ball out to a guy like CD Lamb Marquise Brown Mark Andrews Dimitri Flowers so many weapons Steve this is the most difficult offense to defend in college football this year on first down and goal from the six Baker will hand it off Rodney Anderson will be dropped for a loss. Excellent defensive play by the Mountaineers' best defensive player, David Long. Yeah, David Long needs to have a big game. He's an unquestioned leader of this Mountaineer defense, and now that no Will Greer on the team, unquestioned leader of the team. He's got to have a big game along with our sheet Benton, the Mike linebacker number three. Those two guys have to have an effect on Mayfield and Anderson in the run game. Crowd is chanting Baker's name. They want a touchdown pass. His second and goal. Here's the opportunity to throw and is juggled and caught. CD Lamb, touchdown. While Baker Mayfield's consecutive start streak came to an end at 37, he has now thrown a touchdown pass in 38 consecutive games. Here's Cybert on for the extra point. On the way, and it's perfect. Quick strike, Oklahoma offense on display. 14-3 Sooners. Talk about the pressure this Oklahoma offense puts on defenses. When you're able to run the ball with Anderson in the middle of the field, it puts pressure. 
in the secondary. And that time, it was Drayvon Henry. Here's Drayvon right here, and it's long right here. They have to respect this action. And when that action goes and they come up, there's nobody left behind it. That's too big of a window right there for Baker Mayfield to throw that football into. You can't be right when this offense is really humming. Minute 47, 75 yards, some four plays. Baker Mayfield is back in business. I know there's been a lot of emotion for, for Baker this week. And certainly uh, something, as we said, something had to be done. I think this can ultimately, Steve, they'll be a positive for him. He came out here. The team is, is going well. They score on the first drive. He comes out. They get a touchdown. They're up 14-3, and the crowd has embraced him. He knew that was going to happen, right? But we make mistakes. Everybody make mistakes when you're 21, 22 years old like he is. And how nice is it for him to, to make a mistake, have a good conversation with Lincoln Riley, know that he has to change his behavior, come out here and perform the way that they have in the first two drives, and then put that behind him and move forward and change behavior. Couldn't, couldn't have gone better for Baker. Riley said he really had to think long and hard about the kind of discipline. Here's Marcus Sims from the goal line. Sims trying to spin away from some people. Get out to the 26. Say hi to Adnan Burke. All right, Steve Levy, thank you very much. Dr. Pepper Championship Drive update. It is the Iron Bowl, and Auburn not wasting any time. Direct step, carry on Johnson to Nate Craig Myers, and now inside the five, up 7-0. Steve, back to you. But you're right, Steve. I, you know, I think people forget that Lincoln Riley's a first-year head coach, right, of the number four team in the country, and he's got the Heisman favorite by a long shot who does something, makes a mistake, and, and he had the guts to make the right call. And I've been as impressed with Lincoln Riley as any coach in college football this year. First down and 23 after the marker. Here's Justin Crawford out across the 20-yard line. Will Johnson and Caleb Kelly in stop. Go back and take a look at that penalty and see if Dana Holgerson had a point. If you see that black line, that's a line of scrimmage. As long as that ball is thrown behind the black line, it's not a penalty, but it was clearly thrown beyond that black line. So a good call by this official. Second and 15, get some of the penalty yardage back. Throwing and completing the Sills for the short game. Sills, who leads the country in touchdown catches with 18. I think for them to get some offense and some rhythm going, and Chris Chuganoff getting his rhythm going, they're going to have to throw the ball on first down. It's the best situation to throw the ball to these receivers outside rather than getting in these kind of situations. Third and 11, it's almost impossible to throw the ball with any kind of success, not to mention you get Obo Okoronkwo coming off the edge. That is the advantage West Virginia might have. Their receivers against the Oklahoma secondary. Three of them at the bottom of your screen. Here's third and 11. Chugging off. Down the middle of the field, and it's caught by Sills, and he stays on his feet. David Sills, and then coughs up the football, able to recover, and a flag comes in late. So an awful lot happening there on that one play after the reception was made. It's 
Great adjustment by David Sills. There's going to be some throws in this game where Chris Chuganoff just trusts him, and he's got to come back and make a play. That ball, maybe a 50-50 ball, and Sills goes up and uses that 6-4 frame to come down with the football. One of the reasons why. There is no foul for a block in the back. It'll be first down. One of the reasons why David Sills is one of the three finalists, semifinals for the Bolitnikoff Award. Take a look. When you throw this football, when Chuganoff throws the football, take a look at where the defense is. Here they are right here. There's not a whole lot of room there. He's trusting Sills to come back and make that adjustment. And he does. It makes a play for his quarterback and sets him up in business inside the 25. It's a 51-yard gain on the pass play. And I would think that would, that would give your quarterback uh, plenty of confidence. Absolutely. Third and 11, no problem. On first down and 10. Flags fly as they hand it off to Crawford. Leads forward for a yard. Marquez Overton at the nose tackle spot. Offside, defense number 31 lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, replay first down. That's Okoronkwo trying to get a little extra advantage as if he needs it. The senior from Houston, Texas. Outstanding defensive player on that senior defensive line. Typically when you see that happen from a defensive end or outside linebacker, it's on third down trying to get an edge, but on first down, no reason for Obo to be offside. First and five. I would take a shot. Here's chugging off. Thinking along the same line, back of the end zone. It sills. Did he get the no? He caught the ball, but they're going to say he was out of bounds. Stephen Parker had the coverage. Wow. This is the traditional fake bubble and have a receiver go downfield to the corner of the end zone. Chugging off a great throw. Gives Sills an opportunity chance. His feet definitely come down inbounds. He has the ball. But <laughs> So this is that catch, no catch conversation. You have to control the ball all the way through the ground. That ground causes the ball to come out. It's an incomplete pass, and by definition, it was a good call. Not even going to look at it. Second and five. Going up is Jennings, and he's able to hang on, and he has the first down. Will Johnson put the pop on him. That was 12-on-12 12 12 violence right there. Very Jennings, 93rd catch of the season. He's Closing in on 100 catches for the year, already over a thousand yards. He's one of the more sure-handed wide receivers in college football. Again, only all those yards, Greece, all those catches, one touchdown. Yeah. Well, when they, get, when they get down in here, though, it's David Sills' territory. He's got 18 of them, and I don't blame him. Crawford trying to find a hole and finds a few yards. Come up on a minute 40 left in the quarter. We're watching that matchup of Sills versus these smaller corners with Motley at six foot 175. With Norwood, it's 5'11, 168 versus a receiver who's 6'4, 205 pounds. I've seen them now try to move their safety over Stephen Parker, a little bit more attention to him in case they have to have a bigger guy. He's 6'1, 205. We'll see how they match up here. Well, time. He just came off the field. Second and nine. That ball is out. Crawford fumbled the football, and I think Oklahoma has it. Okoronkwo was the first into the pile. Rasee Lobo came out with it. And he's got the football. These self-inflicted wounds for West Virginia. They just can't have it when you come on the road in this environment. It looked like Justin Crawford just took his eyes off the ball. It's a simple pitch. Chugging off, it's a great pitch. Goes right through his hands. Looking at the defense before the football. Mountaineers were marching down the field. Nothing to show for. Baker Mayfield, the Sooners offense, when we come back. We'll see an Oklahoma offense that will be ready to run their seventh play of the game. Six plays so far. 145 yards and two touchdowns. Quick strike offenses. As the fumble stands, they did take a look at it in the break. And it remains Oklahoma football. They'll start deep in their own territory out of the 11-yard line. 
But get in motion. And it's Rodney Anderson trying to break through. And he was just tipped up at the line of scrimmage. This has been a better marriage in college football in the last few years. Coach and quarterback than Lincoln Riley and Baker Mayfield. I think these two are perfectly suited for each other, both from a on the field standpoint as well as a temperament standpoint. Lincoln Riley very laid back. I think Baker Mayfield and he have a great relationship and you can tell they love working with each other. He's Mayfield to throw down the middle of the field. Got a man in the wide open. Marquise Brown. Again, the quick strike offense. Now that was my quarterback. He'd be my best friend too. We'd get, <laughs> we'd get along great. And the quarterback's best friend is speed on the outside, and that's the definition of Marquise Brown. You can see if you don't get a jam on him, if you allow him a free release into the secondary. There's not a whole lot of DBs in college football that can run with him, and that's an element, Steve, of this Oklahoma offense that was going to be missing potentially this year without a D.D. Westbrook, and Brown has filled that role. Brown averaging 19 yards per catch. That was good for 56. Here's Anderson inside the 20-yard line. And that will be the end of the first quarter. Quick strike offense for Oklahoma. Baker Mayfield did not start the game. Came in for their second series. Shooters already have 217 yards of offense. You're watching College Football on ESPN, presented by PlayStation View. Jeffy Luke Rivalry Week continues to be a dandy tonight. It's Clemson in South Carolina. Enough said. It's also streamed live on the ESPN app. 109th straight season for the matchup. Second longest uninterrupted series. Minnesota Wisconsin is the longest. Again, the ESPN app is a fan's best friend. Go live your life. Do what you have to do. Keep eating those Thanksgiving leftovers. Mm. All these, while these watching the app. Days. Yeah. Is that is that it? Well, that's what I'm going to get home. So that's yeah, what I'm right. Handoff. Rodney Anderson. We open up quarter number two. He tries to cut it inside, and he has enough for the first down. Steve Levy, along with Ryan Greasy, Todd McShay. Hope everybody had a great holiday. And keep in mind, the camera adds 15 pounds after Thanksgiving. That's uh, that's why you won't see us on camera and all that often. So. <laughs> you had a big plate of food, and this Oklahoma offense, they got a big plate of plays. Hey, look at these rankings. I mean, yards per play 20 plus yards those are the explosive plays this is the most explosive offense in college football and they've already started uh, this first half the same way they're averaging over 24 yards per offensive snap today and we're 40 seconds into the second quarter leading 14-3 and looking for more on third down and one hand it off anderson i don't think he got there rodney anderson was stopped Critical defensive play by West Virginia. Al Rashid Benton, the male in the middle, makes the stop. Well, we talked about Benton, we talked about Long having to affect this run game. Also, Dylan Tonkery is going to come off the edge. You see number three coming off and 10. Great job with short yardage defense by West Virginia. And Lincoln Riley, no hesitation, he's going to go for it. We got Dimitri Flowers in there, the fullback, and a tight end as well. Some Smallwood in motion, hand it off. And it is Flowers has the first down yardage. Benton got him, but not soon enough. Dimitri Flowers is the Swiss Army knife of this offense for Oklahoma. We can talk about all the flashy Marquise Brown and Andrews and all that, but the guy that makes it go when crunch time comes is Dimitri Flowers. He's one-on-one -on -one with Benton, and he takes the first down gets the best of Benton. He's still on the field. Benton is being attended to. One of the critical defenders for West Virginia. Flowers goes 6'2", 247 pounds. I mean, he's, you try to tackle him in the hole, and it looks like Al Benton kind of got shaken up with his shoulder there. But Flowers is, is he's going to be an excellent player at the next level. I'm interested, Todd, in your thoughts on on Flowers as a tight end fullback kind of at the next level. Saw so Rick Spielman down here, the GM of the Vikings, and he was looking at him and, and talking to some of the coaches about him, just the versatility that he brings. It was funny, before that play, Mayfield looked over and said, hey, I, I quarterback sneak, I, I got it. Riley's like, eh, why don't we give it to the 247-pounder? <laughs>
Well, not only that in short yardage, but now once Oklahoma gets inside the 10 yard line, Flowers becomes a real option. He's got four rushing touchdowns and four receiving touchdowns. They love to feature him in the red zone. One of only three players in the FBS to have that, that kind of mix with the four plus rush here, touchdown, four plus receiving touchdowns. And here's Anderson for the corner. Got it. Touchdown. Oklahoma making it look easy. Their third score of the afternoon. This is the number one play for Oklahoma. It's the counter play. Watch Bobby Evans come through the line of scrimmage and gets the block here. They pull both the guard and the tackle. He just gets enough of David Long. And when you give Rodney Anderson that amount of room at 218 pounds, he's going to find the end zone. But if you're going to stop that counter play, you've got to get penetration into the backfield. And West Virginia's defensive line has not been able to do it so far in this game. You love Bobby Evans. Orlando Brown gets all that love. But Evans is a star on that offensive line as well. This offense stars everywhere you look. Oklahoma, every time they get the football, they score a touchdown. Neil Lane designs for Hollywood's biggest stars, and at K, he designs for the star. Extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds, and for that, we thank them. What's uh, what's going on here? <laughs> Does he have a seatbelt or something? Uh, I hope. I mean, he might need Allstate. All <laughs> oh, these wacky college kids. On senior day, Oklahoma honoring 18 seniors playing their final home game. Petaway and Sims are back deep. Touchback, and we get back in touch with that neighbor. Oh, well done, Steve. We an update once again on the Iron Bowl after converting a fourth and one. Jalen Hurts says, why not? We ran it five straight times, this time to Jerry Judy, the true freshman. Maybe a little bit of a push up. 36 yard touchdown at seven all right now. And Jesse Palmer, by the way, appreciate the guy on the wagon. Meantime, speaking of rolling, Penn State over Maryland. Mike Kosicki here with the touchdown. 28 to nothing, Penn State. Back to you, Steve. And uh, thank you, keeping us posted on this rivalry Saturday. Here in college football. Out of the Wildcat again, it's Kennedy McCoy. This was effective in the first series, and why not go to it again? It's McCoy across midfield, dropped the 38 by Trey Norwood. Kennedy McCoy for 36, the sophomore. Lingenfelter. Great block. It's just a quarterback power, but instead of using a quarterback, you use a running back, and you gain one overplayed there by the safety and a big game. Chugging off the quarterback's bottom of your screen. They're going to flip it to him. Here's Chugging off to throw it. Marcus Sims down. He's got it. It looks like he's hurt, but he's got the football down at the three-yard line. What a play by West Virginia. And nice design from Jake Spavlo. You come right back to that Wildcat look. Here comes chugging off this way, and watch how wide open on the back end. If this ball was thrown out in front of Sims, it would have been a touchdown. And he comes up, as you said, Steve, a little gingerly. And see Mike Stoops, a defensive coordinator. You got to know coming in that Jake Spavlo and Dana Holgerson down 21 to three. They're going to have a few trick plays in the back of their pocket to try to get back in this game. That last flea flicker good for 35. First down and goal. Ball spotted at the four. It's McCoy again out of the Wildcat. Chugging off bottom of your screen. And it's McCoy crashes down to the one yard line. Will Johnson prevented that from being a West Virginia touchdown. Third trip into the red zone by the Mountaineers. All they have is a field goal to show for it for now. It's getting chippy in there between this offensive line for West Virginia and that defensive line. Looked like Grant Lingenfelter was mixing it up inside. E.J. Ward, Overton, Famatu. Keep an eye on that as this game goes on. And again, the Wildcat, and I agree with him. It's working. Why not stick with it? And 
And they do. It's McCoy. Maybe gets half a yard. Steven Parker came up to make the stop along with Caleb Kelly. That time it looked like McCoy, if he would have handed that football off, he may have had had something. And Reggie Roberson has been playing at that kind of H-back position. I think you got to go back. I'd stick with it. I'd stick with the uh, Wildcat here. He's been looking for it. Looks like Chuganov is going to take this snap, though, on third and goal. He's on his center, and he hands it off to Crawford. They're going to say he didn't get there. And it's a pushing and shoving after the play. But Crawford has stopped at the six-inch line. But the Ronquo made the stop. Overall, Ronquo has been everywhere so far for that Oklahoma defense. But it's going to bring up a fourth and goal. So the nose of the ball is on the goal line. Yeah, they got to take another look at this. Crawford. Take a look to see if his knee came down. Looked like he definitely got across. I think that's a touchdown. That ball came down on top of the right line. And you can't see from that angle. You are shielded from seeing the football. And again, the call on the field is not a touchdown. Right in front of the now take a look at the knee. The knee does not go down. So that's the first thing. I don't think his knee ever hit the ground. Now it's just whether that ball, knee's not down. And where is the football when he ultimately comes down? Does he cross? Again, it's just a front plane there. Unfortunately for Justin Crawford, the angle there, you can't really tell. And I don't think there's enough evidence to overturn the call in the field. I think it'll probably stand. Progressive, progressive pile on Cam, giving us a good look there, but maybe not a good enough look as far as West Virginia is concerned to overturn that call in the field. But you just can't see where the football is. I, again, I don't think the knee was down at this point. Just whether they determine when he finally came down, whether it broke the front plane of the goal line. And if not, it'll bring up a fourth down, and I guarantee you, Dana Holgers is yeah. going for it. After review, the ruling on the field stands as called, short of the goal line. Stands as called is the critical verbiage there. So here we go, fourth and goal. That might be less than six inches. Keep an eye on Elijah Wellman here, too. You know, he's sometimes in these areas of the field a factor for West Virginia. Mountaineers chance to stay in the game right here. Ten and a half to play in the half. And it's Kennedy McCoy for the touchdown. The gamble pays off. Jake Spavito brought in the extra, extra beef. They brought in Trevor and Wesco, both tight end slash fullbacks, Wellman and Wesco. And they ran right behind him, and, and they got in. There they are right here, 88 and 28. It's just power football. West Virginia needed that one. And that Wildcat has been so effective getting them to that position. Again, West Virginia, three possessions, Greece. They've made it to the Sooner 11, the Sooner 12. And now to the one for the touchdown there as we await this extra point. David Staley is 12 for 12 on extra points since replacing Mike Molina. Puts it through. Mountaineers stay in the ball game. But really big plays everywhere you look. Up and down the field. Both teams. This is Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield has the opportunity to be the first Heisman Trophy winning national championship quarterback. And first to ever finish three years in the top four in the Heisman voting, which is, is an amazing feat in and of itself. And he's guaranteed of that. And uh, surprise onside. Onside kick. West Virginia pulling out all the stops. Let's see if Staley recovered his own kick. 
It definitely traveled 10 yards. <laughs> Evan Staley, what a story. The redshirt freshman from Romney, West Virginia. What a great call here by Dana Holgerson. You see that that front line for Oklahoma is about 12 yards away from the football. It looked like number 29. That's Prentice McKinney, a safety. Just kind of fell asleep on it and heads up play by Staley jumping on the football. Has to go 10 yards. I thought it did, Grease. Oh, he, he might have made contact. Right hand. Did he get that right hand on the football before it traveled 10 yards? Great, a great call by Dana Holgerson, and we're going to find out if it was executed correctly. You get anxious, right? Because you see that defender that's coming for that ball, and, and then you reach out for the football. Again, it's got to get to the 45 yard line before Staley can touch it. Watch his right hand. Yeah, I think he touches it clearly before it gets to 45 yards right there to the 45 yard line. And that was well designed. You, you see a lot of bad onside kicks, too. That was. That was perfectly done, except for that one little issue of not traveling 10 yards. Wow. And this is going to hand Oklahoma great field position. Well, it's, it's, it was a gutsy call. Great call by Dana Holgerson. You just got to execute it, and it's a game of inches. Really haven't heard that before. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I got to write, hey, write that down. You're probably the best color man in business for nothing. That's good point. You finally watched Major League, huh? <laughs> you finally got to watch some of those movies. With Tom Petty blaring in the background. The waiting, of course. As we wait on Brad Van Varks. Call. Just think if West Virginia would have executed this correctly and then they they get the ball near midfield and are able to go down and put another seven points it's a completely different ball game but now as you mentioned Oklahoma is going to get this football in plus territory and with their explosive offense give them a short field yeah. yeah and you get get the ball back in the second half too if you're West Virginia so you're really trying to carry the momentum in I, I agree I thought it was a great great call so close after review the ball was illegally touched by the Therefore, the ball belongs to the, rece the receiving team, first down and ten. Six more inches. Great idea, great design. Does not work out for the Mountaineers. And when this one is all said and done, we might circle this play as the turning point or the key point of the game. Well, I mean... West Virginia should be in this ball game. You go back to the David Sills dro uh, drop. We go back to the fumble by Justin Crawford taking his eyes off the ball, and then that play just a little bit early by Staley. Those three plays could have gone in West Virginia's favor. What's Dana arguing there? That seemed to be pretty conclusive. The video. So they open up on first down and ten now. Oklahoma does at the West Virginia 44 and a half. The half playing the critical role. Mayfield to throw off the play action. Wide open is Mark Andrews. He rumbles down inside the 20 yard line. Andrews first catch of the day. It's good for 25. Great look at Baker Mayfield thrown into a window. You got zone dropping linebackers David Long and Benton and that is perfectly done. That's great anticipation from Baker Mayfield. Mark Andrews that's years of being on the same page with your tight end and being accurate with the football and on time. At the 20. On the ground, a Trey Sermon. And a flag comes in late. True freshman from Marietta, Georgia. Al Rashid Benton was shaken up earlier, able to make the play. Holding offense number 58. 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. That's Eric Wren, the center. Benton's name came up in discussions this week because talk, he's one of the guys who like to talk on the West Virginia defense. And we were wondering, really, on both sides, how do you get inside Baker Mayfield's head? 
can he be toyed with? Can you rattle his cage? And if anyone on West Virginia was going to do it, it likely was going to be out. Yeah, and, and based on what happened last week with Baker in Kansas, he's going to get everybody is going to be chirping at him. So he, he's got to adjust his game. He's got to be ready for that. Uh, if I were playing Baker Mayfield, I wouldn't talk to him at all. He don't want to poke the bear. Leave him alone. Here's first and 20 after the marker. Mayfield will throw it. He'll zip it in there again for Andrews. Get most of the penalty yardage back. This is patented Baker Mayfield here. He's just going to extend. Here's Mark Andrews. And being on the same page, we talked about it two plays ago. He, all these receivers know that when he extends plays and he goes to his right in particular, that he's going to be have his eyes downfield and they've got to uncover. One of the strategies from Tony Gibson, defensive coordinator for West Virginia, was to flush Baker Mayfield to the opposite direction, left. Felt like he wasn't in safe. He's serving 50 move. And he's dropped at the 10 yard line. I think he'll be short of the first down. Kenny Robinson made a fine tackle. We got third one, and the chippiness continues. That's Kenny Robinson, the true freshman safety for West Virginia. He's coming up and was grabbing the leg. Feels like bedlam down here. There's bad blood, it seems, between these two teams. Robinson dumps Sermon down there, and then Bobby Evans, the tackle, is not uh, not going to have it. Now, they've already had fisticuffs on the other side of the football down inside the five-yard line. Guys pushing and shoving. You see Baker Mayfield in the middle of that, right, trying to break it up? Yeah. Where typically... He's an instigator, and now I guess he's oh, one, taking, one week later taking he's a, a different role. He's a brand, to, brand new guy trying to take a different role. These two teams uh, engaged in some rough stuff and some chippiness prior to last year's game. Here's third and one. Mayfield gonna try to keep it, lowers his shoulder and can't get there. A host of Mountaineers on third and one, and again more pushing and shoving after the whistle. Kaiser White made the first hit on Mayfield to keep him out, prevent him from getting that first down. That's the first uh, play call I have not agreed with from Lincoln Riley. I don't, I don't know what this formation was. I don't know what this play was, but I'm not going to take my my star quarterback and put him in harm's way if I don't need to. I've got Dimitri Flowers back there, 250 pounds. Give it to him in short yardage and let him convert. But Baker Mayfield took two or three big hits on that short run, didn't make it. Sooners have already converted on a fourth and one. Here's a second opportunity. Flowers is in there, the fullback. Mayfield out of the gut. And you heard the whistles. They set the debt in motion. And a timeout taken. And again, more players coming together. Oklahoma calls their first time out of the half. It'll be a media break. Oklahoma charged with that timeout as the players are separated. We, see, we saw TCU involved in yeah. some ugliness yesterday. Of course, TCU will play Oklahoma next week in the Big 12 championship game. Back to Norman after this. All right. The College Football Playoff Selection Show, December 3rd at noon on ESPN. Texans, Ravens, Monday, 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Back just in time. Here's fourth and one for Baker Mayfield and Oklahoma leading 21-10. From the 11 of West Virginia. Mayfield on the ground to Rodney Anderson. He's got the first down and he wants some more. And won't allow himself to be brought down until the four. And then the players come together again. And more flags fly, and the officials need to get control of this one. Drew Samia in the middle of it all, the offensive lineman, the massive right guard from Sacramento. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 75 of the offense. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. Number 75 is disqualified from the game. You had to see this coming if you're Drew Samaya, right? It's Adam Schuler. He's been doing it last couple of plays, and he got the best of them. 
You can't talk to him. You can't. You can't retaliate. Oklahoma has much more to lose than West Virginia does. And take a look right here. What you didn't see was before that Samaya or Schuler was on top of Samaya, pushing him into the ground, baiting him, and Samaya reacted. They've been baiting him all game long. Samia will leave. He was the first Oklahoma true freshman offensive tackle starter dating back to 2006. Tells you how talented he is. And he's heading for the early shower. Kicked out of the game. Let's go back and take a look at what Schuler. Schuler, I think, is as much at fault here as anybody. He's number 88 in white. Here he is right on top of him. And just push him into the ground. Maybe. Trying to get his hand in his face mask. I mean, who knows what's going on there? And, and it's hard to blame Samaya for the reaction. But you got it. You got to let him go. You got to let it go. And he's he's really fortunate this happened in the first half of the game rather than the second half because if it happened in the second half, he wouldn't play the first half of next week in the Big 12 championship game potential against TCU. So it's time to settle things down. And the officials have done some of that. Ben Powers moves over to the right guard. Cody Ford will replace Powers at the left guard. I'm not sure why Samaya is thrown out of the game, though, to be totally honest. We didn't throw a punch. You know, you get it on Sportsman like you get a warning before you get kicked out of the, of the football game. I'd love an explanation from this Big 12 crew. As to why they kicked him out of the football game rather than just give him an unsportsmanlike conduct. Reese, I thought when he was on his back, he did fire a right in the air, but he was down in a prone position trying to protect himself. This is Baker Mayfield the in the break trying to foul. tell everybody, hey, don't talk to him. Just don't talk to him. Great leadership there and, and a change from Baker Mayfield from a week ago, but Samaya obviously didn't, didn't listen to him. So it's going to be first down and goal with the ball spotted out of the 20-yard line after the post-possession foul. We'll take another look at that, what happened to the pile. We'll begin an explanation. On the ground off the high snap, Anderson is able to get three yards. And again, there's more pushing and shoving. Looked like White got the extra shot in there. And the crowd wants to know where's the penalty marker this time. Yep. And I agree with you, Steve. I mean, Brad Van Verk and this crew, they need to they need to take ownership of this game. We'll take one more look and see what Samaya did here. He's on top of him, trying to get him off of him. Watch coming up here, right, right. there. Is that yeah. is that a punch? And the, the center judge was right on top of him. Guy's right on top of you. Brian Allos is the center judge. Second down. Anderson spins off one tackle. Gets out to the 10, gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. somebody up that's chirping at you talking to you don't use punches use power and put the ball in the end zone this is the way you shut up the team cd lamb emerging as one of the best young wide receivers in the country and if you want to take your game to the next level you block like this what a great job working down the field and allowing the back to get in for a score 28 10 the fourth ranked sooners on top Rated RP2M. Here's Vaughn home, right? And keep in mind, South Carolina has won five straight home games. That'll be fun to watch tonight. We are through from 
of Mormon, Oklahoma. 28-10, fourth ranked Sooners, and again, more of the nonsense. And in a rivalry weekend, you don't exactly think of West Virginia and Oklahoma as two rivals. Trey Norwood in there doing some of the talking. Yeah, these two teams got into it before the game last year, though. We got to be smart right now. You want to get this the fans into it, your Lampkin, and you got the momentum now if you're Oklahoma, but you got to be smart. Mentioned last year, and this is the game played in Morgantown. This was prior to the game. Love the emotion of college football, right? And you come out and, and you want to be emotional, you want to pull an upset, and then West Virginia got the doors blown off. Baker accounted for four touchdowns on the day. 56-28 win. That's the poking of the bear you talked about. Baker Mayfield's a changed man. Well, you want to see a change of behavior, right? Who knows if a he's little a changed bit. man? Yeah, but I, I will say this. After that last touchdown, I watched him throughout the entire break. He went up and down the sideline. He talked to every starter on the defense. And I think he, what he was saying to him, hey, be smart, right? They're going to come after you. Be smart. And then he went all the way down his entire starting offense and said the same thing. That's a great change in behavior to me if, if you're watching Baker Mayfield. Off the play fake. Chug it off to throw. Lofts it a little too high. Look for Eli Wellman. Again, remember last week, got all the national headlines, all the conversation at Kansas. They refused to shake his hand, and well, Mayfield went a little too far. And then this week, he's the peacemaker. Yeah, well, this is what you want to see, right? If you're an Oklahoma fan or you're a fan of college football, you see him in there breaking up a fight, getting his guys. He's not looking at the West Virginia guys. He's looking at his guys, focused on leadership with his team without losing that passion and that edge. I think that's a great sign for Baker. College players are still learning. So we got a timeout. Timeout, Oklahoma, their second and a half. It'll be a media break. 514 to go here in the half. These teams could use a cooling down period. At games all season long, and this the final weekend, regular season weekend of college football. Championship weekend upcoming. It's a bowl season, all good all the time. College football. Third down and eight. Chris Chuganoff, six of nine, with 98 yards passing so far. Replacing the injured Will Greer. Chug it off. Great protection. And he'll check it down to Trevon Wesco. Caleb Kelly makes the stop. Trevon Wesco on the grab. And there is a flag down at the 23-yard line. Check the mark. You mentioned that great protection for Chuganoff. Obo Karanko was coming off the edge and the right tackle, Colton McKivitz, just stoned him. We haven't mentioned uh, Okoronko's name much in this game at all. There's two, I think, really good tackles for West Virginia. McKivitz on the right side and then Kajust on the left side. They've done their part. It hasn't been because of them that they're down in this game. The pass was touched and caught by a receiver that was covered up and er therefore ineligible. We have illegal touching on the offense. That penalty will be declined brings up fourth down so more illegal touching Just can't go right for, for West Virginia here's McKivitz on the right side Okoronko is one of the better pass rushers and you see McKivitz he gives a little bit of ground and then at some point when you get that bull rush right into you as an offensive tackle you've got to be able to put your feet in the ground and stone them and that was impressive for McKivitz here's Billy Kinney and our first part of the game Comes with under five minutes to play in the half. C.D. Lamb is dropped at the 35. Senate Dad Danvert. All right, Leafs, thank you very much. Coming up on the Lexus halftime report. Back and forth so far in the Iron Bowl as Auburn has a slim lead over Alabama at the half. Plus, 
curb your enthusiasm. Ohio State may have won over Michigan, but Urban Meyer irked with what happened to his starting quarterback. Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway, and me coming up the half. Leaves back to you. Something about a camera, apparently. Great tease there, by uh, yeah. I don't know what that is. It can be tipped off after a game like that. It wasn't our broadcast either. It wasn't our camera. <laughs> Just saying. We'll watch for the halftime report coming up. 4.46 to go here in the second quarter. It's all West Virginia when it comes to time of possession. It's never mattered less off the play fake. Mayfield throwing down the middle. What a grab by Lamb. Spinorama, and he's down. Knocked out at the two-yard line, but there are two flags back behind the play. There are two flags back at the 26 and the 29-yard line. If it stands, it's a 62-yard play. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number five of the defense. Penalty will be added to the end of the run, half the distance, first down. Xavier Preston, roughing the passer. Oh, oh yeah. That's an easy call for the official, too. That's a great throw here from Baker Mayfield. A lot of times you try to put a lot of air under that football, but take the guesswork out of it. He throws a dart to C.D. Lamb, and as impressive as that throw was, Steve, I'm more impressed that Baker Mayfield didn't react or respond to that clear personal foul from Xavier Preston. Put two hands into his neck area. Uh, that's, that's really well done by Baker Mayfield. He was dancing down the field. Mayfield's been perfect in every aspect of that. Hand off to Rodney Anderson. And because your white fills the hole, bring up a second down and goal. Baker Mayfield passing is six for six, 173 yards and one touchdown. And if I was him, you know what? I'd be dancing too. Look at him. <laughs> There's a happy guy. He just loves playing the game, right? And, and you love to watch players like that. Yes. And it's infectious yeah. as teammates pick up on his well. His second down and goal. Again, it's Anderson. And he gets there. Touchdown. Rodney Anderson finds the end zone again. His fourth touchdown of the game. Only so much tripping you can do, and so many late hits you can have. But once you get down by 24 points in the first half of a game, it all falls flat. And Oklahoma has taken over control of the physicality of this game, the execution of this game, and they're winning with class right now. Five possessions, five touchdowns by the Sooners. 35-10. On the field, right? Get your guys up. Make sure nobody does anything stupid. You know it's been a chippy game. Let's get off the field. And then once you get off the field, now you can be go back to your <laughs> to your normal bully itself, right? And, and have some fun. I'd love to believe Greece he's, he's a changed man, but. I find it hard to believe that anybody could change so much in a in a one week span. Now, I'd like to believe he's learned his lesson, yep. you know. And, and of course, this will this will come out. We'll find out how he really has changed in the future and, and definitely at the next level. But uh, I have to be impressed by the turnaround in Baker Mayfield. I, I don't think that you that you change who you are in one week, Steve. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that what Lincoln Riley said to Baker Mayfield is you need to change your behavior. I don't want you to change who you are. I just need you to be a better Baker right. Mayfield. And that means managing that edge on the field, being smart, smarter than you were last week. And yes, you can do that in one week, right? Change your behavior, yes. have some more discipline, and he's done that. He needs credit for that. I think the best part of you is you, is what he told us, Todd McShay. And Greasy, you put it perfectly earlier. We all make, made mistakes. We still make mistakes, but we all made mistakes when we were around his age. And he's having to be really the face of college football this year. And a lot of pressure on him. And he plays the game with emotion. Sometimes the best things that happen to you, and I know in my life, or when you do stumble and you do make a dumb decision, having someone there for you to be able to tell you and, and to punish you. 
And Todd, the face of college football, the next step, you know, is the face of an NFL team. And we'll get into that as the game progresses. Here's Ed then. Face of an NFL team, perhaps Baker Mayfield one day. Just want to let you know, PlayStation View, Multiview leaves. Wisconsin right now is all over Minnesota. That game's on ABC and Kansas State. A slim lead over Iowa State. That game is on ESPN2. Back to you guys in Norman. All right, Adnan, thank you. And Todd's exactly right. You know, I, I mean, I made, I made a ton of mistakes when I was Baker's age. And I was suspended by Lloyd, Lloyd Carr, our head coach, for six months of the season. But I'm talking about, about Surrey being humbled, okay? Uh, football was taken away from me, and sometimes you need that to change behavior. Out of the Wildcat, it's Kennedy McCoy. This is about the only thing that has worked on offense. And he is swung around by Stephen Parker. We'll go back and take one more look. Watch, he gets punched in the head. I mean, that could have easily been a targeting foul and an ejection for Preston. He doesn't go back and chirp. He doesn't chase after him. Just says, listen, there's a flag. Throw the flag. Okay, that, that's, that's a change of behavior that's positive for, for Baker. And he's going to be tested going Absolutely. forward. Because you know it's in his DNA because we've seen it before. And under intense pressure, how will he respond? Here's Justin Crawford on the ground for a yard. Kenneth Mann making the tackle. Todd, so you know NFL people are watching every move by Baker Mayfield. I'm curious, you know, reaction to the uh, shenanigans of a week ago and, and how quickly they might fall back in love with him if they lost any of that love this week. Yeah, I, I actually talked to a, a few scouts and general managers this week on purpose because I knew we'd, we'd talk about this. And every one of them basically said, hey, listen, he's going to go through psychological tests. We're going to interview him. We're going to really dig into who he is as a person. And we're going to find out more as we get closer. But it definitely puts it on the radar. It's a red flag you have to deal with. Third and seven. Chug it off. Down the sideline. Under throw his intended target, Gary Jennings. Stephen Parker had the coverage. One, one GM that I talked to said, you know, Philip Rivers, he kind of plays the game with that same mentality, and it's worked out for Rivers. They're, maturing is the whole key, it is learning from some of these mistakes. Yeah, Todd, you know, I, I agree with you, and I don't think it's as much for the NFL about the actions. I think it's about the character of the individuals, but sometimes actions are windows into who we are as individuals. And if that's not really who Baker Mayfield is, these change in behavior and actions today, I think, is a step in the right direction. That'll bounce in front of C.D. Lamb, and it'll be down by West Virginia. I'd love to know what Coach Carr suspended you for. I think America, I think America wants to know. Yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, check Google. <laughs> Uh, down to Todd for more on Baker. You got some grades for us? A plus, A plus? Oh, yeah, no. they're, okay. they're all, uh, they're, they keep improving every time we see him. Let's put it that way. And I think, you know, a little bit like his personality, his greatest strength is his ability to extend plays and create. But the, the fact that there is the issue of him struggling, moving to his left and stepping up in the pocket, it's a really good grade in terms of pocket mobility, but there are some things he can still improve. But for me personally, I thought coming into the year, he was more of a third rounder who maybe one day develops into a starter down the road, but you're not banking on it, versus investing a first round pick in him. And right now, he's playing like a first round quarterback. And I know the intangibles everyone's going to look at, but he has an awesome football coach. That's a big, big move from the third rounder. A first round pick is Trey Sermon is the ball carrier. And Todd, you still have him fourth quarterback coming off the board? I do, but the gap is closing almost weekly. I mean, the way he's playing and, and the leadership he shows and, and just the it factor that he brings. You know, Todd, there's no substitute for being accurate, too. And I feel like he's one of the more accurate quarterbacks in all of college football. You can't overcome that if you don't have it. Leads the nation in completion percentage. And he'll add to that right there. Dimitri Flowers across midfield. And his accuracy, he's been perfect today. Yes. <laughs> 100%. He's been the most efficient quarterback in college football in back-to-back -back seasons, and he will leave a legacy here at Oklahoma as the most efficient quarterback to ever play in college football. I mean, and I know there's been a lot of programs, a lot of quarterbacks, and we're in a passing uh, kind of era here in college football, but nobody, nobody has done it more efficiently than Baker Mayfield. That's saying something. Little shuttle, the Jeff Burdett, the wide receiver. 
And he gets out of bounds just before the first down marker. That goes as a completion make Mayfield 8 for 8 in the game. You're just joining us. He, he did not start the season, start the game. Kyler Murray got the start. He ran 66 yards, Murray did, on his first snap. Wound up being a touchdown drive. Only a two-play drive, went 70 yards. Cashed in with a four-yard touchdown from Rodney Anderson. And then it was uh, back to the Baker Mayfield show. With 50 seconds left in the half. Play fake. Mayfield wants some more. All sorts of time. Now take a shot and throw it back in the end zone. And it's knocked away. Mark Andrews had it. And then he did not. Elijah Battle able to knock it free. And that goes as the first incompletion for Baker Mayfield. Yeah, you can see Baker thinking through that play the whole time. He had plenty of protection, plenty of time, and thought he might give his big tight end an opportunity there. Had a chance. Good coverage by West Virginia. From our progressive pylon camp, you got the beautiful look at it. Third down and three upcoming. West Virginia. They're second and a half. It'll be 30 seconds in length. Timeout Mountaineers and Baker Mayfield leaves and playing in his final home game here today. Think about all he has achieved. Dana Holgerson said it seems like he's been around a decade. <laughs> he has been around a long time, but uh, putting up uh, eye popping, staggering numbers. And uh, he will leave here, I believe, as, as the best quarterback in Oklahoma history. Yep. And I, you know, if they're able to continue on, win the Big 12, get into the playoff, and win a national championship, imagine the legacy that uh, number six in red will leave on this university. And, you know, I think one thing we were talking with Todd about is, is the next level for him. I think, you know, with so much variability, so many question marks, with quarterbacks and drafting quarterbacks. You look at some of the ones that have been drafted here lately. Though you can take out of the equation the competitiveness with, with him. Like you, you know that he loves football. He's gonna live football at the next level. And to me, there's a lot of value in that. So you're not hung up on the height like a lot of people are. No. Nope. I agree. Off the free foot, they want some more. Mayfield's gonna get tripped up and then stay on his feet and slide down. And a couple of white jerseys will fall on top of him for good measure. He had a flea flicker and wasn't open downfield, and it's a great job, great awareness from Baker Mayfield of not forcing the football. And it comes back. Normally they only have one receiver out. You see the safety running out of there, so just got to make something out of nothing. It's a five-yard run on first down and ten. Mayfield a throw. And zips it in there to Mark Andrews. He'll move the sticks and start the clock again. Another 30 seconds here with one timeout. Sermon is stopped at the 22. And now they'll spend their last timeout. Yeah, Lincoln Riley wanted more out of that run right there. I think he might be kicking himself. Say, why did I call that run and force myself to call my last timeout? If you throw the football there or you get uh, any kind of clock stoppage, you open up your inventory of plays you can call. Week 12 of the NFL is upon us. Make sure you're watching 10 a.m. Eastern here on ESPN, our Sunday NFL countdown crew. All the early breaking stories, injury updates, and we'll preview each game right up until kickoff. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and then cap off week 12, the NFL in style. Marty and company will be headed for Baltimore. It's Monday Night Football, the Texans and the Ravens. Coverage begins with Susie and the gang. Monday Night Countdown at 6 p.m. Eastern. Also available in Spanish on ESPN2. 35-10 Oklahoma, and they are not satisfied. They are looking for more. The Sooners already have 421 yards of offense and five touchdowns. And this is their sixth possession of this first half. And I wonder if Dana Holgerson is going back to that. You know, if he just had gotten that onside kick. Yeah. It was 21-10. Right. Could have had possession at midfield, and things were clicking for West Virginia at that point. Since then, they've been able to add a couple scores. Here's Mayfield. 
All sorts of time directing traffic. Now uh, he'll gun it out for Marquise Brown. He'll get out of bounds. Stop the clock. West Virginia continues to try to bait Baker Mayfield. That time it's Ezekiel Rose pulling him down late after the ball thrown. Take a look again. Here's Rose coming 91. Baker throws the ball. Right there. What, what would he have done earlier in the year, right? You can still talk, right? You just can't have the action. Here's Mayfield. Zips one in there to Andrews for the touchdown. And I'm not sure that will add to the talking or quiet the Mountaineers. Second touchdown pass for Baker Mayfield, who's having himself a party in his final home game as a senior Sooner. 41-10, Oklahoma. Wow. Maybe that needs to be Baker Mayfield's new celebration after a touchdown. Get away from everybody on the field, run over to your sideline, and then do some kind of celebration. I think it'll be interesting. We started talking about, you know, when is he going to come into the game? I think in the second half, it'll be interesting when Lincoln Riley pulls him from the game, especially in a chippy affair. Yep. He's put up some gaudy numbers to this point. Yeah, lost in all that is what a great throw this was. You got to throw it right behind the linebacker, David Long. We saw this earlier in the game. When you have play action, hard play action, and a run game with Sting, and an accurate quarterback like that, that can throw the ball into tight windows, that is almost impossible to stop. And when you have a, a guy who's emotional and he can manage those emotions, still energize your team, that's the best of both worlds. He's emotional. And he's also honest. Uh, he had this to say this week. Just about the opponents. And if I were on another team, I would hate me too. <laughs> More so for his play than anything. Yeah. I mean, I like that guy. And, and, and his coaching staff, look, you expect the coaching staff to say nice things about their own player. But they go overboard, over. We don't know the kid like, you know, like yeah. that. And you, we see the incidents. We have seen the apologies. And yet all we hear from the other side is what a great kid. A kid who goes out of his way, gives people extra time in the facility and out of the facility. Great with the kids. You know, kids are around the program, and he spends extra special time with them. Doesn't, he goes up to visit kids, doesn't need a camera to go with him. And that's what you want to hear about. Him. And his teammates swear by him. 13 more seconds to play out in this first half. But all that being said, right, he's out. He's out of I'm sorry. Yes. Right? Uh, we don't, nobody wants to hear any more I'm sorry from Baker Mayfield. Right. Like regardless. Yes. There's three of them this year. One off the field related and two on the field. P punching the flag at Ohio State. That doesn't bother me as much as what happened a week ago. But Baker Mayfield, you're done with the I'm sorry. Just let your play speak for you. Chuggenov and company to get in the locker. A bit of a low snap. He'll throw it on the run and he'll complete. Little trickeration, a pitch. And that ball, let's see. Oklahoma says they've got it. And they do. Another turnover. This with four seconds left. I mean, I credit West Virginia for trying things. But when they do, they're making it worse. Cornell Motley, I think, recovered that. Well, they tried the hook and lateral, and he laterals it to Jennings. He was going to throw it on the sideline. You saw Crawford, it was on the sideline. That was going to be a double lateral. So here's the first lateral to Jennings. You see Crawford over there, 25 on the sideline. And I mean, I, the hook and lateral itself is difficult to, to execute just because you're going to have guys grabbing on you. Two of them, I've never seen that before. Think Mayfield is going to take a knee? I don't think so. We'll try a field goal. Austin Seibert. His career long is 49 yards. This will be from 51. To really make West Virginia pay. Tom away. And it is good. 
Austin Seibert, a new career long. The most accurate field goal kicker in the Big 12. Hits from 51. Hard to imagine this first half going any better for Baker Mayfield and Oklahoma. 45 to 10, the Sooners lead West Virginia. We'll hear from Coach Lincoln Riley with Todd in a moment. But first, to the studio, Adnan Verk and the Halftime Report. In the end, it's really about being the best. The National Championship Trophy, presented by Dr. Pepper, is on display here at Oklahoma. You're watching College Football on ESPN. Presented by PlayStation View. And if you saw us in the first half, you saw an awful lot of Oklahoma offense. The Baker Mayfield Show. It started late, but when it started, look out, get out of the way. One of 18 seniors being honored, playing his final home game here today in Norman. And then they got off to a hot, hot start. And the question was, how is he going to respond to last week? being uh, suspended for the opening of the game in the captaincy. Would he come out and play with a little more calm, a little more cool, a little more class? That was the question, and uh, he's answered that in droves. He's been a leader on the field. He's been a leader in breaking up some of these skirmishes in the first half, trying to be the voice of reason on the sideline at times. And uh, I tell you, Steve, I've been impressed with the way that he's changed his behavior in just one week's time. Maybe the only question here in a 45 to 10 game is how much longer we see him, if at all. Especially when you consider Kyler Murray, who started the game at quarterback. On his first snap, he ripped off 66 yards up the middle. And they cashed in for a touchdown one play later. But he has no helmet. And West Virginia will get the football. And they will start out at the own 25-yard line. So much up for grabs still in college football. When you look at the landscape, and maybe appear what's going on with uh, Auburn and Alabama over yep. the way. So much going on. And here it is. You know, Oklahoma can't clinch a berth in the playoffs today. Baker Mayfield might be able to clinch the Heisman Trophy, though, today. Well, he's still going to have to play well next week. But certainly, uh, Baker is uh, head and shoulders above the rest of, of the candidates. Although, uh, I would put in my uh, my two cents for carry on Johnson who looks like he's having a heck of a game in the iron board and, and laying it all on the line for his team deserves to be in New York on first down and 10 <laughs> on to the 27 yard line Justin Crawford picks up three you know it's hard to say this game turned on that onside kick because it was already 21 to 10 but ever since that onside kick that West Virginia illegally touched really six inches too soon. Oklahoma scored 24 unanswered points. And they lead 45 to 10. Chris Chuganov is the starting quarterback, but it's Kennedy McCoy out of the Wildcat, who's done the bulk of the offense for the Mountaineers. Marquez Overton makes the tackle there. Chuganov is an interesting story because he replaced Will Greer in case you missed it from a week ago, Greer, a gruesome injury, and uh, brought into to some talking about the attention of the play call itself on a third down and one. Instead of handing it off to, say, a Justin Crawford, for example, it was Greer trying to reach for the pylon and busted up his finger. Had the surgery this past Sunday. He hopes to be back in uh, maybe four to six weeks. They're trying to see if they would time up with their bowl game. But that is yet to be determined. Kennedy McCoy has first down yards there, but Greer was having a phenomenal season for West Virginia. Yeah, 34 touchdowns uh, on the season. He was dynamite, and this is the uh, play that you mentioned. It was a fake, and I don't blame the play call one bit. These things happen. It's football. It's a physical sport. He gets his hand caught in the ground, and... Uh, Broke that finger, and good. the good news is that the surgery was successful, as you mentioned, and he's got another season left. You know, he's uh, obviously uh, started his career at Florida and resurrected it here under Dana Holgerson, and what do you got next year? Here's Chuganov down the middle of the field. It's a jump ball, and it's knocked away. David Sills was the intended target. Parnell Motley and Will Johnson had the excellent coverage for Oklahoma. 
Jason Sills was the beneficiary of that great year from Will Greer. He has 18 touchdowns, leads all of college football, and he's a finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award, which will be awarded the uh, first week of December. I think he's a real candidate. I mean, he obviously, James Washington uh, from uh, Oklahoma State as well in that list. That Sills in motion. To Crawford, and he is taken down for a loss. Amani Bledsoe, and a flag comes late. Could be a face mask. Well, that seems to be everyone's indication. Yeah, that clearly looked like a face mask. I'm not sure how, why there weren't two or three more flags. Bledsoe got that right hand out on Justin Crawford. If I'm Brad Van Vark, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this game really tight in the second half. I'm not going to allow any shenanigans, any after the whistle, pushing and shoving. you got to take control. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense, 15 yards at the end of the run, first down. It was a first half that got out of control, yep. seemingly for, for a while there in the second quarter after every whistle. Flags were flying and players were coming together. We did see one ejection. And if I were the referee at halftime, I would have gone into both coaches' locker rooms and I would have had a conversation with each head coach about the way that this game had gone in the first half and the way that I wanted it to go in the second half and that I was planning on, on calling it tighter in the second half. And Lincoln Riley should listen because anything that happens over in the second half could influence the first half of the Big 12 championship game next week against TCU. Yes, that is all uh, locked up, all decided. Great to have the Big 12 championship back. And I like the way they do it, too. It's not a division side, you know, east, west, north, south. Give me the two best teams in the championship game. <laughs> Here's Crawford. And he'll stay on his feet. Justin Crawford will knife through for a few more down to the 29. That's what Crawford does so well is his vision. He really reads the blocks, but also reads the defense. In Oklahoma, sometimes when they get in trouble, their linebackers and safeties can, can bite on it and go in one direction and get sucked into that direction. And if you have a good back with vision and it sends for the cutback lane, like Crawford, you're able to exploit it. 19 yards on that play. Crawford's over 1,000 rushing for the season now. Both Chuganov and McCoy are back there in the backfield. <laughs> Next to each other, you see who gets the snap. It's chugging off this time. And he'll throw one down. And under through Gary Jennings, the flag flies late. Stephen Parker on the coverage. He's going to get whistled for pass interference. This is the biggest difference between a Will Greer and a Chris Chuganoff. Greer makes this throw. Jennings clearly had the defender beat, and a ball thrown in the back of the end zone would have been a touchdown. Defense number 10, 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, Chuganov's ball is probably six or seven yards short. Now you get the pass interference, but that should have been a touchdown. Ball is spotted out at the uh, ten and a half yard line. Rather big about the fifteen and a half. And as Oklahoma goes forward, that's going to be the area where teams are going to attack them in the secondary. They've got a lot of young players, two true freshmen playing a lot of snaps. They've gotten better, but. They're going to be challenged as this season goes on. It's McCoy untouched into the end zone. Kennedy McCoy for the 15-yard touchdown. Second touchdown of the game for McCoy as he creeps near 100 yards rushing. It's an interesting-looking play there. It almost looked like... McCoy halfway through his read was going to stop and throw the football. Watch him here. He, he pauses. He's looking downfield and then he goes. I don't know if he was just waiting for the hole to develop or whether he was actually going to throw the ball down the field. Either way, the Red Seas parted and an easy touchdown. There is the extra point. 11.59 left here in the third. Things will look a little better now. For West Virginia, aided by a couple of penalties. 45-17, Baker back when we come back. Elvira. Bluff time on. Celebrate PK-80 tomorrow. It's that time of year. Finish up the great college football regular season and get into the meat of the college basketball season. Look forward to that. 
on the ESPN family of networks. Following the West Virginia touchdown, we'll see how Oklahoma will answer. Bounce into the end zone. Well, touchback. Everything's seemingly working for Oklahoma here today. Yeah, but their favorite play, Steve, on offense is the counter, unquestionably. They love to pull Orlando Brown or Bobby Evans on one side and get Rodney Anderson into the second level, and then they add on top Dimitri Flowers. They've done this play all year to perfection. I think a big reason why Rodney Anderson has gotten more looks as this season has gone on is because of his patience on this play in particular, that counter play. Remember, Early in the season, it was Abdul Adams, it was true freshman Trey Sermon, and Anderson has come on in the last month, month and a half of the season. Good story, too. He missed two years, one with a, a broken leg, he broke his neck another year, and finally, as a senior, he's gotten his opportunity to shine. Mayfield comes out firing and overthrows CeeDee Lamb. More on Rodney Anderson at the season-ending injuries. 2015, it was the knee. 2016, it was a neck injury. He was really a, a quiet, likable guy. And uh, his parents say he's hilarious. I mean, he's he's, so. he's funny. He's just hilarious around the team. But you don't often see that personality out of him. Apparently, here in Norman, his parents actually own a gourmet popcorn store back in Katy, Texas. Look at you. You've got all kind of research. He's cracking. That uh, is 45, <laughs> 17. Here's Mayfield to throw. And they look for more. That stops the clock, the incompletion. <laughs> Over the head of uh, Marquise Brown. Uh, so talented. And, you know, with all these coaching names popping up, how smart does Oklahoma look right now for locking up Lincoln Riley when they do? Yeah, you know, I think you've got to give Bob Stoops some credit, too. I mean, Bob Stoops is Oklahoma through and through. And, and he was a big reason why Lincoln Riley is here in the first place. And I think Bob Stoops realized that for the good of this program, going forward for the next 10 15 years it was the right time to step aside and allow Lincoln Riley uh, to assume uh, the leadership role here because other other programs would have been coming they would have been beating down his door on third and ten Mayfield fires and completes Grant Calcaterra his first catch and there's a first down for 15 yards checked him into that play too Good snap. You see him do a lot of that, Todd? I, I haven't seen a ton of no, it. No, not a set. ton, but I just I happened to notice that one because at the last minute he, he motioned to his receivers and, and checked out of whatever they had, and clearly he knew what he was doing. That's the one thing we don't talk a whole lot about with Baker Mayfield is managing protections at the line of scrimmage, getting in and out of the right plays. But I asked Lincoln Riley about it when we were here a month ago, and he felt as comfortable with him as anybody he's ever had in checking plays. Mayfield off the play fake throwing, and again, it's Lamb. They love C.D. Lamb, a true freshman. They have so many talented people at the skill positions here. The game plan for Lincoln Riley in the second half is come out, get a stop on defense. Well, that didn't happen. But if they score on offense, I'm taking the starters out of this game. Gain of 11 on that play. Lamb had nine catches, 147 yards, and two touchdowns against Texas Tech when we were here last time. Put on quite a show. He's got four catches for 92 yards so far here today. On the ground, a sermon stand on his feet, the first down, and then some. Guys here, White bringing him down, but not until it was too late, gain of 16. Uh, we just talked about that counterplay. Take a look at big Orlando Brown. He just <laughs> swallows people. Then Bobby Evans throwing people on the ground. I mean, this. This offensive line is playing with attitude here, and that's great. You know, I love seeing that. If I'm Lincoln Riley, I know these guys are on the edge. I want to get that. I want to get one more touchdown drive, and I want these guys on the sideline. Toyus Avery is being attended to for West Virginia. Coming up tonight, Clemson and South Carolina, one of the great rivalry games all across college football. Man, South Carolina could really, could really do a number on the Tigers tonight. That'll be fun to watch. The game known as the Palmetto Bowl. They're meeting for the 109th straight season. Second longest uninterrupted series. Minnesota-Wisconsin is also playing at this hour. Not nearly as close. Uh, that matchup is, is the longest 
you think about Clemson, South Carolina tonight. Well, if, if you're rooting for chaos in college football, you're rooting for South Carolina because if Clemson goes down and then they have two losses and end up beating Miami in the ACC championship, See ya. you'd almost say the ACC's out. Yep. And now you got to bring back the, the Pac-12 conversation. That's amazing. Yeah, it's uh, Ohio State with two losses. It comes back potentially in the conversation. Even a TCU, if they're able to somehow find a way to beat this juggernaut in Oklahoma next week, could be back in. Play fake. Mayfield will throw. And under three is intended target Marquise Brown. Elijah Battle was with him. There is a flag, as you might expect. As you watch Oklahoma next week in the Pac in the Big 12 championship. Pass interference. Defense number 19. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Battle doesn't even turn his head. And if they're able, if they're able to get into the college football playoff. You number, need to watch number five, Marquise Brown. If you don't get a jam on him at the line of scrimmage, he will make you pay in the secondary. I'm not sure why teams aren't coming up and, and jamming him. He's not real good at getting off the line of scrimmage with physical corners. But if you let him run, he'll make you pay. It's only 162 pounds. First down and 10. Abdul Adams has checked in for the first time. And Mayfield a throw. Finds his man in a seam. It's Calcaterra for the touchdown. Grant Calcaterra. Third touchdown of the season for the true freshman. And man, the Sooners move up and down the field at ease. It's because all elements of this offense fit together, Steve. The run game fits with the pass game. You're going to see hard play action away, and that affects the linebackers. And you insert Andrews and Calcaterra Calcaterra is basically a tight end, but you insert those guys in the seam while you're affecting the underneath coverage with that play action, and it's impossible to stop. Eight possessions, seven ending in touchdowns. Even the one field goal was a 51-yard field goal. I mean, it's an amazing day, and there's more to come for Baker Mayfield at fourth-ranked Oklahoma. The senior from Moore, Oklahoma, and I don't think you see the back of her, her jersey. I think it's a girlfriend, right? <laughs> yeah. We gotta update that. Somebody get her a fiance jersey. Congratulations, DJ. Yes. Nicely done. You know, one of these days, someone's gonna say no in that spot. One of yeah. these days, that's gonna happen. Hopefully, we don't have a microphone when that happens. I don't wish that on anybody. <laughs> that would make sports that is not top ten <laughs> plays. You had one job. Oklahoma and TCU, they're going to get together next week in Arlington, Texas, the Big 12 championship game. They met in the regular season November 11th. Rodney Anderson, 290 yards from scrimmage and four more touchdowns like he has today. Fifth ranked Sooners, top number six, TCU, 38 to 20. Baker Mayfield threw for 333 yards and three scores and ran for another 50 yards. And that will be a fun, fun game to watch. It's one of the hardest things to do in sports is beat a team twice in one year, right? And so that's that's the challenge for Oklahoma. You know Gary Patterson, how good of a defensive coach he is. And uh, he'll have time to watch that film, grade it with his guys on defense, and come up with a plan for Oklahoma's offense and, and Baker Mayfield. I expect Kenny Hill to play a better game as well. He didn't play very well in the first time. I think one of the things is going to be in Watch out for Anderson catching the ball. Did you see that catch he had against TCU? Yeah. He had about 100, over 100 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns. That, to me, showed the versatility and, and his potential. Second down and one. On the ground at Crawford. I think they're going to give it to him. The one yard where they spot it, and that'll move the chain. Speaking of TCU, Gary Peterson, Patterson, congratulations. Got a two-year yep. contract extension. And in this time of craziness with the coaching circles, uh, people being fired instantly, uh, speculation about firings, some based on today's game even. I mean, it's yeah. the coaching carousel in college football is nuts. That was a preemptive move there by TCU. Everybody starts to talk about Gary Patterson and the different jobs that come open, specifically in the SEC, whether it's Tennessee or others. And uh, nice job with them by locking him up for another couple of years. On first down, it's Kennedy McCoy. 
Let's talk about Gus Malzahn. If, if well, that's just crap. I mean, that, that, that's a product of the fan base and, uh, and the expectations at Auburn that, uh, you know, that you have to win every single year. And he hasn't, he hasn't done well the last two years. And then every time they lose a big game, everybody's saying, well, that we need to get somebody else in here. So finally he says, well, wait a minute. If you guys don't want to you know, wed me long term, then I'm going to go somewhere else right. where, where they do appreciate it. And it sounds like they appreciate him in Arkansas is what it sounds Absolutely. like. And they've got some money to spend. Here's Kennedy McCoy again, the ball carrier, He'll take some people on. Kenneth Murray among them. We got a shot of Dana Holgerson for the first time on the sideline and uh, Sam's headset, which is kind of an odd sight. Not attached at all in any way. It's not been the kind of year that Dana Holgerson was looking for, uh, but you know, he's made some changes. Uh, he turned over play calling due to Jake Spavital. I thought it was the right decision as we started this year with, with Dana Holgerson. He's taken more interest in special teams and, and managing the game. He's too good of a coach not to get this uh, West Virginia team back where they want to be next year. Out of the Wildcat, what else? Kennedy McCoy. He rumbles down. Motley grabbed him. Or else he would have gone the distance. This offense for West Virginia kind of reminds me of Baylor a year ago. Remember, they had all of the injuries, and there was nobody left to play quarterback. And they just had to bring in a receiver and, and run the Wildcat. They almost, beat, uh, they almost beat Texas doing that, and that's kind of where West Virginia is offensively with the injuries of quarterback. Kennedy McCoy has been the offense, 126 rushing yards on 15 carries. Back to Crawford. Going to bring up a second down. Is that interesting to you? Does that mean anything to see Dana without the headset on the sideline? Yeah, I mean, I think with, <laughs> they're down 52-17, and he realizes it's not about strategy right now. It's about how do I how do I keep my team? How do I keep them from doing anything they'll regret here in the second half? And uh, how do I build for the future there? Have some uh, some time to, to practice for a bowl game, and you want to make sure that uh, he's continuing to build the psyche of this program. Took the play clock all the way down, and there's Crawford inside the 15 now. Holgerson was uh, rather public this week, saying, "Hey, the offense is in a bad place, and I've got to fix it," and uh, he's really. Tried to stay away and delegate, be more of a CEO this year. A pu interesting public comments, I thought, this week. Yeah, and, and I think it's it's been kind of a combination with, with Jake Spavler. Jake Spavler is an excellent football coach, and he wasn't brought here just to be the yes guy to Dana Holgerson, right? If, if Dana Dana knew the only way he was going to get Spavital to come to West Virginia was to give him full control of calling the plays, and there is no question uh, who's uh, in charge of calling these plays. And it's it's Spavital. Spavital's in his second stint at West Virginia. He's coached uh, Davis Webb and Cal. Johnny Manziel was there for him at A&M, and in and his first stint in Morgantown, he had Geno Smith as his quarterback. Martel Petaway was the ball carry, got his first touch. And they go right back to Petaway on second down and six, bring up a third down and shoot. Not only Geno Smith, but he was also the one that recruited and coached Kyler Murray his first year at Texas A&M. And Kyler Murray now at Oklahoma on the other side of the field. So one of the better uh, coordinators and quarterback coaches in college football, in my opinion. West Virginia's goal, we saw them in the opener. All along was, hey, let's play a 13th game. They were obviously hoping it was a conference championship game. But it will be their bowl game. It will be their 13th game. Here in trouble in game number 12 on the season. Here's McCoy out of that Wildcat. He's got the first down. He's down to the four-yard line. Emmanuel Beal made the stop. Well, they're not going to win this game, but uh, they might have found something with, with McCoy here in this Wildcat formation. You see 13 plays, 113 yards. It's been very effective. It's been their most effective offense today, and no matter what happens uh, the rest of this season, I think you're going to see that saw a true sophomore, Kennedy McCoy, and a Wildcat package as a part of this West Virginia offense next year. We've got 233 rushing yards here today so far. 
On first and goal, here's McCoy. Back to the line of scrimmage. Again, it's Emmanuel Beal. You know, and some of those rushing numbers have to be taken with some perspective. Like you said, Justin Crawford a year ago had 331 rushing yards against Oklahoma. And the Sooners blew the Mountaineers out of the stadium at one time. So. Some of this is just padding statistics in a 52-17 game with four minutes to play. Is the 12th play of the drive upcoming. It's McCoy all day long. And no signal yet. Well, I thought he got in. Great effort by McCoy. He did. Yeah, wow. you, you were right. Touchdown, West Virginia. It's Kennedy McCoy. Watch that at the end here. He's, there's no give up in number four. Pushing that leg drive. McKivitz coming off. Josh Sills, a left guard. You got to see the look that Chuganov gives gives the official running in from the sideline. Like, can we get some kind of signal? <laughs> Which is how I was feeling for a second. It is a touchdown for West Virginia. And again, it'll look better in the box score tomorrow. At 52-23. Hey, kids, what's a box score? <laughs> can Google that, too. Here's chugging off bottom of your screen. Okay, so there's the touchdown. Ruling on the field of a touchdown Watch is like... under further review. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> Will help? Will help? That's Frank LeBlanc. They're going to review to see if, in fact, it was a touchdown. These officials, by the way, we, we're, we're having a good time at their expense. They have an impossible job oh, at yeah. real speed. Very, very difficult, and they get it right almost almost every single time. Well, it's it's hard to you know sometimes you're this headlines when you're down here and you can't see through all these bodies. I mean, look at that. Look at you got three defensive linemen in there, a leg, a foot, a thigh. So, sounds like for, a sounds like a turkey for a second. <laughs> a leg, a thigh. What do you think? An about? arm, <laughs> a chicken wing. All right, it's turkey. All right, raise your hand if you had a turkey sandwich at halftime of this game, America. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of people all raising their hand at one time. After review, the ruling on the field of touchdown stands as called. Twelve plays. 75 yards a drive that took 639 off the clock. They did not put the football in the air one time. Yeah, a lot of Wildcat. That's a, that's a drive that West Virginia, they'll, they'll look back at this game, and that's something they can build on, right? I know it's a little consolation, but don't lose sight of the physical nature of this game, their offensive line, Kennedy McCoy running tough. No quit. There's Staley on for the extra point. Boots it through. 52 24 three and a half to play in the third have to wonder if baker mayfield's afternoon is done or not sonic blockbusters continues with the pk8 tomorrow wolfpack and iowa state and k-state that game is on espn 2 Cyclones have a five-point lead, 2-11 to go. Back to Steve Levy and Brian Greasy and Topic Show. Adnan continues to navigate the college football landscape throughout the afternoon and into the early evening. Marcellia Sutton on the return. Out to the 40-yard line. Take a look at our Buick Drive recap. Really, just about every single drive resulted in a touchdown for Oklahoma. Yeah, started out uh, the second play of the game after a Kyler Murray long run. It's been the Rodney Anderson show. Four touchdowns on the day for him, over 115 yards on the ground. And it's been that counterplay. And this offensive line up front for Oklahoma deserves a lot of credit. They came out ready to play. 
even though it was chippy in the first half, they kept their cool and they were able to establish a run game, and that's been the difference so far. Austin Seibert is the kicker for Oklahoma. He's also their punter, and we have not seen him punt here today. Eight possessions, seven touchdowns, one field goal, and this is how Oklahoma opens possession number nine with a Trey Sermon run for first down yardage. Well, I got to be honest, I'm a little surprised that Baker Mayfield's still on the field, although Kyler Murray now coming on the field, and I think they just wanted to give him an ovation coming off. And how about that from Lincoln Riley? You start the game with the tough love, the discipline that Baker Mayfield needed, and you end the game with the respect and giving him that curtain call the last time he's in front of this home crowd. It was well done by Lincoln Riley. It's a guy who's paying attention and uh, detail-oriented as well. Here's Trey Sermon. Wow, oh, takes a big yeah, shot. Good. Kaiser White has not given up. White continues to bring the lumber to West Virginia. Last time this crowd at uh, Oklahoma will see uh, what I believe will go down as the most beloved player in Oklahoma history. And if he's able to navigate this college football playoff in the last part of this season and, and bring home a championship to Norman, there's unquestionably, he will be unquestionably the most beloved in uh, Oklahoma history. And they've been playing football around these parks since 1895. That's a long time and a lot of players. Quick screen out to Trey Sermon from Kyler Murray. Reese Donahue made the stop for West Virginia. And quiet pull up, <laughs> quiet applause by Baker Todd. We're just kind of watching the last couple of days and all these teams that are in the playoff losing or getting challenged. And I just started thinking about it. Defensively, clearly Oklahoma is getting better. They're not great. But there's probably not a better unit that will be in the college football playoff than the Baker Mayfield offense for Oklahoma. This is probably the one team I would least want to see if, to face it if I was another coach in, uh, in the playoff. I think you're right, Todd. I mean, there, there's unquestionably no better unit. I look at Auburn defensively. They're not better, but this, oh, this offense is explosive. Miles tees down the sideline. Did he get there? He did. Touchdown. The players change the results of the same. Sooner score again. Kyler Murray to Miles tees. Don't think that this mop-up duty for Kyler Murray doesn't mean something. He came to Oklahoma much like Baker Mayfield came to Oklahoma. After going one place and not working out, he knows this is the last game for Baker Mayfield. This is his show next year, and he wants to stay claim to this Oklahoma, the keys of this Oklahoma offense, and by all accounts, be in good hands. 46-yard scoring strike, I'll say. Pass was a bit low. Teams did a good job to bring it up. What a day for Oklahoma. Want to see a relationship oh, between that, quarterback that and head coach? Does that look like Favre or does that look like Favre? <laughs> Three. Testing. Te is this thing on? Testing. One, two, three. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're going to, hey, they're having a good time now. They're going to have a good time tonight here in Norman. He's like Shannon Sharp. Remember calling the National Guard because we are <laughs> killing the Patriots? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and look, you can't say they're rubbing up the score or rubbing it in. It's their backup yeah. players now. And it's 59 24. Here's Adnan Vert. Testing. Is this thing on, Adnan? I hear you loud and clear, uh, Leaves. Alabama and Auburn is the Iron Bowl. Jerry Sidham, how about this run on second and six? Absolutely fearless. 16-yard touchdown. He gets in. Auburn's up 26-14. However, Kerryon Johnson did lead the game of his own will, but it did not look good. Updating on that. Leaves? Adnan, thank you. Oh, that, that would be a huge blow to Auburn. They, they seems like they're going to potentially win that game but they go to the next game against Georgia without carry on Johnson who's such a big part of their offense 
And Cam Martin, their other running back, just got injured, too. Not yet, if you can hang on and win that game. And lose two key players like that. Already playing without Cameron Petway, too, right? Only three of their top uh, running backs. As you look at this top ten, obviously Miami goes down. Uh, Clemson's tonight. Question mark on that. Oklahoma. I think Oklahoma should have been higher from the very start of this whole thing two weeks ago, ahead of Clemson and ahead of Miami. I think uh, there's a potential for them to, to go up. Auburn should go up. Where does Alabama fall to if they do lose? And then Ohio State got by Michigan. So this thing's going to get movement. dicey. A lot of movement. Capital One college football rankings. Really, it all goes back to October 7th right here. A third-string quarterback in Iowa State came to town. It seems hard to believe, right? But these are college players and college kids. And every once in a while, you're going to not play up to expectations. Yeah. And that's what we love about the game, the lack of predictability. But that one loss, otherwise they might very well be the number one team in the country. They've got it all clicking right now as we hit the final, come up on the final half minute of quarter number three. Mike Stoops said, you know, our defense, defense is playing better. And he gets defense, it's an easy target, the defense at Oklahoma. We're in the Big 12, right? The offense is always putting up big numbers. So when people look to take shots at Oklahoma, it's an easy target to point to the defense, which, you know, he's playing, he's, according to him, playing much better. I, I believe that. They gave up 20 points to TCU. TCU's a good, uh, good offense. This is a good offense. I know it doesn't have real Greer, but uh, they played well tonight. I think, I think the, the defense in the Big 12, it, they get a bad rap. I mean, there's some great quarterbacks in this conference. I think the defenses in the Pac-12, for instance, are worse than the ones in the Big 12. But um, all they got to do is you know, 30 points a game because your offense is scoring 45 a game. To me, that's going to be good enough at the college football playoff level. Three quarters complete from Norman. Oklahoma leads West Virginia 59-24. With producer Josh Hoffman and director Mike Schwab, Levy, Greasy, and McShay from Norman, Oklahoma. As we wish you all a happy Thanksgiving weekend. Enjoy those leftovers. Welcome you to quarter number four in Oklahoma. Out on top 59 to 24. And the Mountaineers trying to make it a little more respectable. Kennedy McCoy could not run underneath that one. In West Virginia for the third quarter, they ran 22 plays, 21 of them on the ground, and just one pass play. As you look at Chris Chuganov, who is replacing Will Greer, the star quarterback for the Mountaineers, who was injured last week and hopes, hopes to return for their bowl game. Well, that'll be very close. The timetable, the date of the bowl, that could be very close again. We're hoping to throw in the next week or two. Yeah, they had to insert a pin and a screw in his hand. Part of his finger on his throwing hand is that middle finger. And, I, you know, judging from the way I threw the ball, you know, your middle finger is obviously the longest finger, and, and it's the last Great finger game. that leaves the ball. So it's very difficult to throw if you don't have great feeling in that. So that'll be a stretch for him, but uh, maybe he can get back for that bowling. See the 34 touchdowns, second most passing touchdowns in the country, and uh, they do throw the ball. Greece, how many how many 1,000 yard receivers do you think there are in the entire SEC <laughs> in the whole conference? You had to guess. Uh, this is fascinating. Here's Chuganov throwing for one of his many talented receivers, like Karan White. Uh, there's actually one, one 1,000 yard receiver in the SEC. It's AJ Brown of Ole Miss, but. West Virginia has a chance, depending on the stat, to have three 1,000-yard receivers. Yeah, they came One in. team, and the whole SEC has one as a conference. And when you consider Justin Crawford went over 1,000 yards rushing here today, the last team in the FBS to have three 1,000-yard receivers and one 1,000-yard running back, Tulsa in 2007. Was that the athletic trivia question? No, that wasn't. Oh. I believe that's coming courtesy of legendary statistician Martin J. Aronoff. Who were the only two head coaches to win a national championship in their first season? 
and a hint for my sidekicks in the booth, the two schools both have the same first two letters in their name. <laughs> Our Aflac trivia yeah, question. Big help. Now we're sidekicks, courtesy of Marty. <laughs> well, I hope that hint helped you out a lot. <laughs> I know I have one of them because I I have direct knowledge. I of. watched you look at the answers today. No, I I saw no, the no. answers this <laughs> earlier, but I didn't know one of them. Go after him, McShay. I'll tell you why in a minute. Now we'll get you that answer shortly. 59-24, Oklahoma. And the Sooners. Look for some more with Kyler Murray at quarterback. So in 1998, we go to the Rose Bowl, and it was 50-year anniversary of the national championship team at Michigan of the 1948 Michigan team that went undefeated, and they told us the story of their first-year head coach, Benny Oosterbaum. <laughs> Not familiar with Benny's work? Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> so I know that was one of them, Marty. I don't know the other one. That's up to McShay. Second and nine. We'll get that answer. America patiently waits. The Aflac a trivia question. We asked two of the only two head coaches to win a national championship in their first season. Don't make me a liar. No, you, got the first, you got the first one, right? You got Benny, 1940 at Michigan, and Larry Coker, Miami, 2001. So, Marty, the clue was the first two letters of the school? Miami. M-I. Michigan. M-I, right, okay, got it. That was quite a quite help. I love that question. I love that. I thought it was going to be like Northwestern with N-W, not the first, first two letters, but. How about Marty, the improvement yes. from week one to week two when he was a star in week one? Some Voice people. inflection and everything. Well, thank you. And the quarterback will keep it, Kyler Murray. Marty, I love how you tie it to Lincoln Riley, right? The first-year head coach with a team that looks like, it, by all accounts, can compete for a national championship. Oh. There's, they're playing as well now, I think, as any team. Uh, you know, some people thought I worked that 1925 game with uh, when B Benny Oosterbaum was an All-American played against Red Grange, but I wasn't quite there. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Oosterbaan. It's O O S T E R B A A N. Don't cheat him out of that second A. <laughs> Marty Aronoff, you can tune in weekly to get his Aflac <laughs> trivia question and answer. West Virginia will get the footback. Sills on the receiving end there. See how much closer the Mountaineers can make this game. The sub above difference is the silver lining. Order Jersey Mike's for your game day. I have Burke back in our college football studios updating you on Iowa State, Kansas State. Eight seconds left. This game was on ESPN2. Skylar Thompson to Isaiah Zuber. After Thompson buys time in the pocket, Zuber comes up as the hero. How about Kansas State? A thrilling victory against Iowa State. Leave. Back to you. All right, Adnan, thank you. Following Oklahoma's first punt of the game. Kennedy McCoy is the ball carrier for West Virginia, and he's going the wrong way, and flags fly. Jordan Thomas came up to make the fine defensive play. They have not stopped playing defense for Oklahoma. How about that? With 12 minutes left in the fourth. Holding offense, number 55. That penalty's declined. Brings up second down. With 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter, that's the first time Oklahoma had the punt today. Yeah. It's been that kind of day. Well, like I said, I mean, Todd made a great point. I think Oklahoma's offense is probably the best unit in college football coming into this playoff run. And I would say that to potentially Auburn's defense might be a close second. It'd be a great matchup there, those two going together. Loss of seven. On that last play. Flip it back to chug it off. The quarterback to throw down the sideline for Sills. And they'll call it a catch. Said he was in bounds. David Sills. Sills is a great story, isn't he? The early commit to, to SC and early. <laughs> 13 years seventh, old. Seventh grade. <laughs> 
But, uh, you know, it was, it was funny talking with Dana Holgerson. He said he had everything you wanted in a quarterback, the leadership, the toughness, the smarts. He just couldn't throw the ball. <laughs> and so he transferred. He wanted to live out his dream, went to El Camino College, and he recruited him to come back to play wide receiver, and he's had an unbelievable season for Dana Holgerson. Well, I respect the way Sills went about it, and actually Coach Holgerson did uh, handle it perfectly as well. 2010, there he is. Got the phone call. Lane Kiffin was the coach at USC at the time. And then uh, played quarterback, then moved to wide receiver in Morgantown. Seven catches, under 31 yards. One more kick at the can, try being quarterback. For El Camino College, and then he comes back, and he leads the FBS in touchdown receptions with 18 entering the game. And Holgerson said, look, you can't play quarterback here, but you can play wide receiver in the NFL if you come here. And uh, these things tend to work out. Nice grab. Good play by Jennings to hang on. And there is a flag on the field. Todd, you got a thought on Sills? I think he's, he's playing well enough that you got to give him a shot. I mean, I don't know that he's going to be the first few rounds. Personal but... foul. Hands to the face. Defense, number 55. That 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. He, he's 6'4". He's over 200 pounds. He's done a great job of improving as a route runner. And he's really good when the ball's up in the air. I think, I think quarterbacks, general managers, love the fact that he was a former quarterback, right? And that he knows offense, knows structures of defenses. And if you've got good hands and you can think, you can play in the NFL receiver. Sills and Jennings are both juniors. Karan White is a senior out of that great White family that has just supplied West Virginia with talent for years. Chug it off, throw an end zone, tipped and knocked away. Sills and Jennings were in the neighborhood, knocked away by Robert Barnes. And there are more flags on the field. Personal foul. Hands to the face, defense number 72, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And the chippiness continues, the rough stuff. Well, that's back-to-back, -back. hands to the face on Ken Mann and now Amani Bledsoe. We've seen Bledsoe involved. Bledsoe locked up right here. There at the end, yeah. That's not dirty. That's just, you know, getting your hands high and no better than that. Martel Petaway to the 10. It's been a wide receiver dominated offense. The last three games for West Virginia, it's been a total of six touchdowns, three each to Sills and three to White, and that's it. No touchdowns from a running back. They are so reliant on their quarterback, quarterbacks, and wide receivers. And that's been mostly offense in three games prior to this one. They have 24 points on the scoreboard today. On the ground, a pet away. And he'll be swung around and down to the 10-yard line. Tackle there by Addison Gums, a, a true freshman for Oklahoma. They're really excited about. He's not quite there physically yet, 6'2", 230 pounds, but they love the fact that he's kind of in the mold of Obu Okoronkwo. Kind of a similar size and speed and explosiveness off the edge. That's the future of Oklahoma's defense on the perimeter. Didn't play seven weeks in a row, and then returned to action last week, picked up a tackle. Here's third and one. On the ground, Petaway, not going to get there. He is shoved back in a big way by John Michael Terry. Fourth and one at the 10. Well, if this, uh, this is all the, the backups reserves for Oklahoma up front going against the starters for West Virginia. If they can get a stop here, they'd be really fired up. 
Holgerson's got the headset back on. Here's fourth and one. Hand it off to Kennedy McCoy. Let's see where they mark it. It'll be very close. McCoy's been their best offensive weapon all afternoon. Let's see, they might need a measurement. Still no indication. Yeah, they got to take a look. That's on us. We talked about the uh, skill set of Addison Gumps and the speed, and but a little light. And when you get inside here and power football, and <laughs> you try to blow up a power play in short yardage, he got piled up. Got a broken stick there. <laughs> They're, they're not cheering for the first down. They just flashed the Auburn score, the Auburn-Alabama score up on the scoreboard here. See, these fans are smart. All those chants around and signs around the country, we want Bama. Uh-uh. <laughs> Although, I don't know. And if you want some chaos, exactly. we've got some college football chaos. I don't, I don't feel like that's chaos. I think that that, that you could see that coming. The injuries to Alabama at defense. Uh, no, no, the chaos. Backwards. What it means to the rest of the country. Yeah. Well, it just means that Alabama is now going to be a problem for these two loss. Oh, no catch. Sills couldn't haul it in with Jordan Thomas on the coverage. So they're going to get. Uh, Maybe a push out. We're going to push in the back. Sills is 6 4, and when he pushed off. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number seven, penalty will be half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. That's number seven's first unsportsmanlike of the game. That's just standing over. He's had a really tough year. Let's put it that way. This is a guy two years ago we were talking about as potentially a first, second round draft pick. And he's struggled the last couple of years. And now he's in with the backups late in the game. Doesn't, you know, doesn't want to be in this situation, but didn't do all the little things that he was supposed to and wound up getting benched for a freshman. Yeah, he got hurt too, had to deal with the injury, and now he's having to fight his way back. That's what Mike Stoops told him. Third Oklahoma penalty this possession. It's Petaway, the ball carrier. But that's not the way to work your way back in, is to get over top of somebody and taunt them like that. Now, Sills has made some plays in this game. He's made some plays downfield on Oklahoma, so maybe it's a little bit of frustration on Jordan Thompson. And all those penalties I mentioned on this possession, all, all personal fouls. Yeah, the two hands to the face. There's uh, no holding penalties in the mix. And we got another flag. Let's see. Illegal snap. Offense number 79. Five yard penalty. Second down. Matt Jones is the center. An offensive line that's allowed the fewest tackle for losses in the conference. Trying to do their best here today and inch closer to another score and to make this final score a little more respectable. Second and goal now. Chug it off is split out to the left top of the screen. Here's McCoy. A yard or two. And the clock will wind. John Michael Terry in the middle of it all for the Oklahoma defense. We'll talk about a full plate on Thanksgiving. Kenny McCoy has rushed 25 times in this game. I mean, he has had a heavy load with no real passing game to speak of from Chris Chuganov. It's all been on Kenny McCoy. He's going to be sore after this one. Has he thrown the football once for the Wildcat? I don't, I don't think he has. No, no. So, I mean, defense knows what's coming. Oh, yeah. And I really haven't been able to stop him. You think just to mix it up, you throw it once out of the wildcat. Here's Chuganov throwing, and it is 
knocked away. Karan White had it in his hands and could not hang on. And that true freshman that has beaten out Jordan Thomas that Todd McShay was talking about, Trey Brown, makes the play. Great play here by Trey Brown. First of all, not to get pass interference called. It's very difficult to come from behind. And he waits till the last minute. Karan White had his hands on the football. And they teach you then to play through the hands to the ball. That was well done by Brown. I mentioned the uh, White family. And uh, so many of the Whites, three of them at least, have gone through West Virginia. They've got a nephew who's in high school, and he might be on the way. Talented, talented family. Timeout. Oklahoma. They're first of the half. It'll be a media break. And we are members of the media. We'll take it with them. That's former All-Pro linebacker Clay Matthews Jr., also known as Dad. We Matthews know a thing or two about football. With PlayStation View, they can watch live football on up to five devices at the same time. Nice. 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 Nice! <laughs> Nothing deficit to defeat Nebraska 23 to 20, and they'll play the Big 12 championship game next week, Oklahoma against TCU. Fourth and goal from out at the eight. Chugging off the throw off his back foot. Look at the Sills. Overthrows him. And they will turn it over. Wait a second. There's a flag. Chance Sylvie was on the coverage. And Lincoln Riley saying that's uncatchable. Well, he's, I think he's got a point. That ball went out of bounds. The universal sign for uncatchable. Pass interference, defense number 28. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line, automatic first down. Fourth penalty on the Sooners on this drive. Take a look. Is this is Sills able to catch that football? There's no chance. I think it's a ticky-tack call, even if it was close. It's a bad call. Yep. Silver. He's got an argument. He's got a... Got a case. Let's settle out of court. Another wild college football Saturday. It's pretty wild college football Friday, too. It's the definition of college football. It's yeah. wild. So number two go down in Miami yesterday. And number one Alabama today. Here's first and goal. Gonna throw for him back in the end zone. No. Trevon Wesco caught it, but he was clearly out of the back of the end zone. Second and goal. We've seen two nice plays from true freshman Trey Brown. This time he reacts. Got full with the fake, and number six here sees coming back. Don't ever give up on the play. If he doesn't come back and push the tight end out of the end zone, that would have been a touchdown. Those are going to be two plays that Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator, gives a little bit of praise to the true freshman, and probably why he's seeing more snaps. Bring up the 14th play of this drive. On the ground. Head away. Touchdown is the signal. And the score. Something for those that made the trip from Morgantown to cheer about. Take a look for the progressive pile on cam. Starting offensive line for West Virginia still in the game going against some of the backups for Oklahoma and Finally pushed through with Petaway 72 yard drive Took six minutes 17 seconds off the clock Petaway cashes in Extra point is through So it'll be a look a lot more respectable when they talk about this game and the rivalry next year 59 31 what is love? Love is what inspires me. It was 21 of 28 for 237. He was terrific. Coming up next, well, hey, Bama went down. Miami went down. Maybe Clemson's the best team in the country. Kelly Bryant and company faces South Carolina. It's next, Steve. Back to you. <laughs> I think I think we're going to vote for Oklahoma. Yeah, even the... Adnan's throwing a little shade on Oklahoma. Yeah, I think Oklahoma's the best team in the country. Of course, from our perspective, we're in the building still, and it's 59-31. And it's not nearly that close. Do not be fooled 
by the score. With six minutes left, Kyler Murray started the game at quarterback, and he will finish it. Abdul Adams is the ball carrier down the sideline. And we'll see if they get a bit of a face mask there as Kenny Robinson was able to run him down. Big game, though, on the play. Well, Abdul Adams, he was the man early in the season for Oklahoma, and he's kind of become the third guy behind Rodney Anderson and, and Trey Sermon, but he wants people to remember that he's got some talent, too. Talented, deep stable of tailbacks for Oklahoma, and, and almost amazed at the fact that they lose some J.P. Ryan and Joe Mixon, and they come back with this three-headed monster. 39 yards on the carry for Abdul Adams. At the 36, and let's see. Timeout, Oklahoma. It'll be a media break. Oklahoma takes a timeout for some reason. <laughs> They're leading by 28 with five and a half to play. 800 Direct TV. Back in Norman. Baker Mayfield for Heisman. What do you think? What the Baker Mayfield Halloween costume? Or? Looks just like him. I think he's got a shot. I don't know. A shot. <laughs> but it did seem like the, the gap was so. close, right? Middle of the season, so many more competitors. Oh, yeah. Well, Saquon Barton is so tight. Price love and all this talk. It really seems like there's a much bigger gap right now with Baker Mayfield well ahead of, of the field. Yeah. I think Bryce Love has still got a shot. He yep. deserves to be in New York. I think the guy that needs to be on this list is Carryon Johnson. Lamar Jackson has sort of crept back into the race as well. Lamar Jackson has very similar numbers to what he had a year ago. So, of course, he should be on that list. And... Some of it has to do with the competition. And you know, Mayfield's having an epic season. Yeah. He's... It's his to, uh, it's, to run away. It's his. Yeah. <laughs> you just wanted to stop there, put yeah, a yeah. Period, period on his sentence. Done. On second down and seven. On the ground to Adams. And out to the 30. I mentioned earlier that uh, he might be the only guy that has finished in the top four. I was incorrect. There's actually been four others. Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside with the Army uh, cadets in the uh, 40s. Who was then... inside? Glenn Davis. Get it right. right <laughs> and then Doak Walker and uh, Herschel Walker. But that's an esteemed list to add Baker Mayfield's name. Quite a legacy. Three finishes in the top four. They all won it. They all won the Heisman at, at one point in their careers. And so Baker would be up for it for a third time, having yet to win it. Maybe this is his year. Might be his year. Might be the Sooners' year. Their first down of the clock will continue. As we get under four minutes to play here in the fourth quarter, Ben's been pushing this number on me. Greece, last time, number one and number two lost in the same week. This late in the season, you have to go back to 2007. These West Virginia Mountaineers, they lost to Pitt. Yeah. And Missouri fell to Oklahoma. Sam Bradford, a quarterback. So doesn't happen that often, but a, a lost weekend for the top two teams. And be interested to see what the shakeup is. Tuesday night becomes really must-see television now. You're dying to see how they how they seed out the top four teams. Could Oklahoma go from four to one? Absolutely. I, I've had Oklahoma at the top. Here's Murray with speed. They should be number one. I mean, they have they have done everything they could do, and they've done it in impressive fashion. And uh, I don't think there's any question. I look at the other teams. Clemson, obviously, is the other team that has the right to that number one spot. But Clemson has not looked good in some of their wins. This is a more impressive team. We've done two Clemson games this year. We did Clemson against Auburn. And then we did them a couple of weeks ago. This team and Baker Mayfield is the big reason why I would have them number one. You dropping Miami right out? Yeah, Miami, Miami's Adi, out of Adi, top four. Adi yeah. or four. It's Abdul Adams, the ball carrier. Brian and Todd have weighed in on their new top four. And Greece has Oklahoma at one. McShay has them at two. Well, these are where we think that it's going to wind up in the end, right? As, yes. as of now, taking into account these results. Well, 
I right. might have the wrong assignment back. That, that, that's what I said last week. <laughs> I'm looking forward, and I'm thinking if Clemson goes and beats a team in Miami, it's probably going to be in the top six, that they'll wind up at one, and Oklahoma at two. I know this, that yes, tell me. Auburn, while it was a great win today, they they have some issues at running back. If Carrion Johnson didn't look like he was going to be able to come back anytime soon, and Cam Martin goes out with an anchor, already missing Cam Petway, uh, that might be an issue against Georgia. Greece, that knocks, Georgia wins that SEC championship. It knocks out Auburn because they have three losses. Yep. And you can't put Bama in over Auburn with the one loss because they just lost to him. So that then opens things up for, for some other conferences, a team like Ohio State, if they are able to beat Wisconsin. Or... Or, or put it back the West Coast. Oh, Notre Dame. <laughs> Notre Dame's definitely in it. Notre Dame, uh, if SC, Georgia being in, right, you wouldn't have been able to put Notre Dame in if Georgia was sitting there at five because of what Georgia did to Notre Dame. So it helps Notre Dame as well. Third and two. Looking to crack 60. All sorts of time for Murray. Back of the end zone and a flag. Two flags. Kaiser White on the coverage. I'll say this about White. He has played hard. Yep. Kaiser White plays hard from start to finish. Actually, three markers down. Holding. Defense number eight. We also have an eligible downfield number 55 of the offense. Those penalties offset will replay third down. They did a, uh, a fascinating exercise on game day today. They did blind resumes for all the guys. And one of the those two losses, uh, best strength of schedule, best strength of record, non conference champion, and Three of the four guys picked them to go into the playoff, and they revealed that was Notre Dame. <laughs> and that was kind of interesting. If you don't see the brand name on top. Well, I know this. Notre Dame had two anchors on, that were above them. That was Miami and Georgia, right? Two right. teams that they lost to. So uh, if Miami beats Clemson in the ACC championship, a lot of people think they're automatically. I don't. I don't think they're automatically, and they may end up at five. And if that be the case, you can't put Notre Dame in over right. Miami because of what happened there. Correct. So <laughs> that was a blowout city, South Beach. Yeah. It is fascinating, and it's amazing that so much still can happen with really one week left, right in the conference championship games next week. No doubt here, though. Kyler Murray and Oklahoma. They'll say, Uncle, we'll take a knee. 59-31 will be your final score. Fourth-ranked Oklahoma makes a case to be the number one team in the country. And with all of the upset and turmoil that we've seen, you know, higher-ranked teams that fall to lower uh, opponents and distractions and all kinds of things, everything was set up here this week for Oklahoma to be distracted. With a team coming in with a, with a backup quarterback, and they did not allow it to creep into their psyche. They handled their leader in Baker Mayfield the right way. Lincoln Riley led the right way. Kyler Murray stepped in and played excellent when they needed him. And this defense got better. And uh, this is as impressive a, a performance as you could have had this week, given all the circumstances. That was one of the interesting things coming in. How long before Baker Mayfield would enter the game? It turned out being just two offensive snaps. That's all he missed because Oklahoma had a 70-yard touchdown drive to start the game. And then he was in, and then he was out when the game was out of doubt. Baker Mayfield, a brilliant performance today. Only put the ball in the air 17 times, completing 14 passes. He hit on his first eight, good for 281 yards, three touchdowns, and did not throw an interception. And the respect and the handshakes for Baker Mayfield that he was not able to receive at the start of the game for the coin flip by not being one of the captains for today's game. And maybe one of the most impressive things he did today was not throwing the football or running it, but the way that he changed his behavior, his actions, his leadership in a game that was chippy, that is normally what the kind of game that he likes to be in, likes to talk, and likes to be 
animated. He was reserved.